Hare Krishna Madhavanantru. Thank you very much for joining for the Monks Podcast once again. It's, our sessions are always very devotionally nourishing, along with, of course, being intellectually stimulating. But thank you very much for joining once again today. And Marendra Prabhu, it's the first time you're on the Monks Podcast. Thank you very much. There's so many devotees who have asked me, when are you going to invite Amarendra Prabhu? I think in the first month we started the podcast, request started coming. And when recently I told a devotee that you are going to be there on the podcast, he said that this will take your YouTube channel into the stars. So you are already a star and we are happy to host you here. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So today, since both of you are connoisseurs of Krishna Bhakti, especially deep and devotional aspects of Krishna Bhakti, I thought of exploring a topic which is just sensitive at the same time vital, I felt, that is the Gopi Gita. And uh, I'll start from what inspired me to suggest this topic, and then we can move forward. One aspect is that uh, this is one of the songs that is sung regularly. In general, I remember uh, when I was introduced to Krishna Consciousness, we used to sing songs, but our teacher, who the person who me, he always insisted, you know, we should just sing, shouldn't just sing songs, but we should also discuss their meanings. And that was consistent. And I realized that after we meditated on the meanings, the, the absorption in singing becomes so much more. And say, for example, apart from the morning program songs, the other songs that we sing for Damodar Rashtakam, we have so many discussions on the meaning of Damodar Rashtakam. But the Gopi Gita we sing and we practically never discuss their meanings. And sometimes I've seen some devotees even hesitate to read the translations after the singing of the Gopi Gita. So it's very sweet even without the meaning. But in general, it does seem that our tradition is that we, we do study and we understand Siddhanta Baliya Chittena Karyalas. Now this is, we, do, we want to go into Rasa, but we also need to understand the Siddhanta. And also, I think Krishna and the Govardhan Leela says that don't just perform ritualistic rituals without knowing what you are doing. So those are the contexts I thought that it's important. We ha- there are cautions, there are reasons to be cautious while discussing the Ras Leela and the Gopi Gita within that. But there are reasons why we need to discuss them also. So this was my thought in choosing this topic. So Madhavantru and then Amarindru, you can share what your thoughts are about this topic. Madhavantru, please. Thank you, Guruji. Um, it's, first of all, I, I think there's a kind of false dilemma. We, we could spend a long time discussing the dilemma. It's, it's false in one sense that this is a big concern because Srila Prabhupada translated a Krishna book. And he gave us these five chapters of the Rasa Panchadhyaya, including the Gopi Gita. And he expected uh, devotees to read it every day. And not only devotees, but he wanted non-devotees to read the book too. So the question is in context, the question is in how it's presented. And maybe a lot of us have heard very severe warnings from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati and from Srila Prabhupada, and we have the, the uh, what is it, the, the Gopi, uh, Gopi Club in Los Angeles, Gopi Bhav, famous, Club, yeah. Gopi Bhav Club that we've famously heard about. And we have all these different warnings. And they're, they're good warnings, they're important. We shouldn't be take things cheaply. But at the same time, this is part of our literature. And, and if we don't understand it, then how can we go forward? My humble suggestion is that with anything in the Bhagavatam, I feel strongly we need to be rooted. We need to see how this relates to me as a person. Otherwise, if we talk about it, like give you an example. I remember it was about 1971 or 72 that I first came in contact with Prabhupada's books. I was a young boy and I uh, went into an abandoned house we were playing in and some hippies or someone had put a bunch of pictures from the Krishna book on the walls. And at that time in my life, I was kind of a searcher and I was uh, studying different religions and traditions. And I had some pride that I knew something about that topic. But when I saw these pictures, I could understand it was something religious, but who is this blue boy and all these girls and cows and (laughs) all these kinds of things? I, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't, there was no context I had for it. 
So we need to have some understanding about these subjects, but we need to hear them from the right source and they need to be presented in the right way. And I, I have some thoughts. I, I'd like to hear something from Amarinder Prabhu, but I, I have some thoughts of how this is relevant for us through Gora Leela and through Srila Prabhupada. But, uh, oh. So just to clarify what you're saying is that sometimes we may be present, if that, I understood the situation you said clearly, sometimes we may, be, we may think we know our philosophy, but because we treat this uh, topic with such a hesitation, that sometimes we may, while presenting our philosophy or in, encountering our own tradition, we may be caught unawares, we may be unprepared to explain or even encounter what we face. Is that what you're trying to say by this incident? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, and, and we can look at, we were mentioning with you the other day, that uh, our most basic preaching uh, literature in ISKCON is Back to Godhead magazine. And in Boston, one year, when, when the, the editors were having a discussion with Srila Prabhupada about standards, someone raised the question, what about the gopis and Radha? Is it okay to speak about them in Back to Godhead? And Prabhupada said no. And then Prabhupada paused, paused for a moment, and he said, but but uh, uh, not that we boycott the gopis. We shouldn't boycott the gopis. There should be some presentation. A Krishna book is there. The first book that, that I started reading before I became a devotee was Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And there's a lot about the gopis and things there also. Yeah. So I thought I'd just get this quote, if you don't mind. It's yeah. an important topic, yeah. So Should I read it or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, good. This is Prabhupada. This is meeting with the BTG discussion with the BTG staff, December 24, 1969, Boston. So, the, so there's a conversation with Prabhupada and Satsuru primarily. So, Hagri Prabhu had written an article which apparently talked about the gopis. It is very nice, it should be published. Yes, I have seen it. That means we can, we can make a reference to the gopis. Satsuru is asking Prabhupada, oh, it is done. Gopis are boycotted. So Prabhupada is sarcastically speaking over here. Then Satur says, no, the gopis are not boycotted. So Prabhupada, the policy should be that the people may not understand gopis like ordinary girls or like that. You should be careful to present the gopis. It does not mean that we shall not even utter, not utter even the name of gopis. We have taken vow to boycott the gopis. No, they are our worshipful devotees. How can we, how we can avoid them? So I think this is the important quote, Prabhupada, this, as you said, Prabhupada wants to make sure that we don't misunderstand, we don't get a mundane understanding of them. But he does want us to, want us to talk and understand them about them properly. You want to elaborate on that quote, Prabhu, a little bit? If you want. Yeah, yeah well, one thing is that if we don't present the gopis, other people will present the gopis. There are dozens or hundreds of different translations and presentations of Gita Govinda, for example. And uh, when uh, in the Gaudiya Mutt, when B.V. Narayan Maharaj presented their uh, edition of, of, of the uh, Gita Govinda, it was controversial because that's a book which generally wasn't published or discussed in, in our Gaudiya line. And I'm not championing them or anything, but using them as an example. And he published that book, he said, because if we don't publish this and other people do, they should know what is our Godia conception of this. And I know there's a number of academics like Garuda Prabhu and others who have presented very nicely the Ras Lila and Gopis and Radha Krishna's intimate dealings. Because the same point, there's many academics who are presenting it, but they're not getting it right. And devotees should have some understanding about it, not just an uh, academic kind of understanding so that we can set the record straight either, but also as Bhaktivinoda Thakur discusses in some places in Bhajan Rahash and others, one of the anartas in the heart is to not understand our goal, not understand Siddhanta properly. So if, if we don't understand what is our goal, if I'm just gonna get, jump in the car and start driving, <laughs> but I have no idea where I wanna go, how am I ever going to get there? Maybe I want to go to Russia. You can drive to Russia from India, but it's a long, long ways. And if I have no idea how I want to go anywhere, so we should read these books. <laughs> it's not that we should lock them all up in a box and burn all the books of the Goswamis or something, but there's a context for them. 
Therefore, Srila Prabhupada gave us Krishna book and Prabhupada wanted us to distribute Krishna book to the non-devotees and wanted them to read it and it included chapters about the Raslila and the gopis, but they're giving in a context. Yeah. So it's almost like in protecting ourselves from misunderstanding, we end up not protecting others from misunderstanding because others get understanding from some other sources. So if we, in, we have to serve our tradition. That means we must understand properly ourselves and we understand how to help others understand. So I think in that sense, this, the discussion we are having is not only, we could say, acceptable or compatible with what Prabhupada and Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, but in a sense, it's essential because we want to continue to represent their tradition. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Samarindra Prabhu, you, uh, what, you would like to say something? Yes. Sure, Prabhuji. First of all, I want to express my gratitude uh, for kindly being included here. Uh, I don't know how I find my place here, but... Um, I think uh, this world is a world of duality, as we were talking about. So if we have Madhavananda Prabhu on one side, you must have Amarendra on the other side to balance it out. So I somehow, uh, in an insignificant way, express my gratitude. Um, I think I want to start off by saying that I completely, I completely agree to everything that Madhavananda Prabhu said. And um, Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport that the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, when sung, they entertain the ear and the meanings when understood entertain and give a, give relish to the heart. So I think we are singing the Gopi Geet and we're getting the melody in the ear, but it's nice to have forums where we can have some relish for the heart as well by discussing the meaning. On one side, we have the, the conservative approach where we want to protect and protect and protect and not speak about it. And on the other hand, we could have the liberal approach of speaking it irrespective of any place, any circumstance, any audience. Um, I personally feel the midway path is very wonderful in this regard. Because by, by boycotting or by avoiding or neglecting these sections, it will be lost with time. And we have always seen in our tradition, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, Samarupayitum Unnata Ujjwala Rasamsva Bhakti Shriyam. He gave the very, uh, very rare treasure of Radha Dasyam, servitude to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani, explained by Rupa Goswami. But then we saw there was a, there was a phase or, or a time period after sunshine. There was a time period in our Gaudiya history, which was filled with dark clouds. And then we had to have Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Baladev Vidya Bhushan to come and clear the clouds of confusion and misunderstanding and, and show the, the blazing effulgent light of the sun of the true Siddhanta. It happened again when Bhaktivinoda Thakur came and he cleared the clouds of uh, uh, Apasampradayak misunderstandings. And then it, it'll happen again and again. So if we don't present the, the right philosophy uh, in the right devotional mood, again, based on the commentaries of our Acharyas, then it, it could be a possibility that... Uh, Maybe 100 years from now, uh, this will be lost. No one will speak about it. And the treasure of the Ras Panchadhyay, and we have the five chapters in the 10th canto, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. And the Gopi Geet is actually the heartbeat in the middle. It's the, it's the central, it's the third uh, uh, chapter out of the five. Um, so it's almost like the central backbone of the Ras Panchadhyay, which is the backbone of the 10th canto. And the 10th canto is the backbone of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of everything that exists. So if like-minded devotees don't discuss it, uh, then what juice will we taste on the path of bhakti? If we can discuss Netflix, if we can discuss politics, if we can discuss entertainment, if we can discuss sports, if we can discuss gossip, if we can discuss the faults of others, uh, and so many other things, what's wrong in discussing in the right mood, context, from the right source, in Anugatya, under guidance, the beautiful, wonderful commentaries and the wonderful conclusions uh, of um, Krishna's dealings with his associates. And finally, I want to mention even Srila Shukdev Goswami uh, in, the, in the concluding Palashruti, the, the last verse of the Raspanchadhyay, he says, Vikriditam vrajavadhu bhiridam cha vishnu, shraddhan vitonu shrunayat atha varanayetyaha, 
भक्ति पराम भगवती प्रतिलभ्य कामम ऋत्रोगम आशु अपहिनोति अचिरेण धीर He says that the biggest problem in this world is lust. And he says, Vikriditam, Vishesha Krida, this very special transcendental pastime, Vikriditam of Vrajavadhubhi, plural sense has been used, which means the gopis, with Vishnu, which is Krishna, the Supreme Lord. What happens with this Vikridita, this very special pastime of Krishna with the gopis? Shraddhanvita, with Paravhakti, or let's say with unparalleled and unprecedented faith, Right, that's that's the verse right there. Um, with with that faith, shraddha, anvita, anushrunuyat. If this is heard with faith in the heart repeatedly, and atha varanayet, and also described in proper mood, in proper context, then bhakti param. Para bhakti means braja bhakti. Para bhakti, raganuga bhakti. Para bhakti, bhakti param, bhagavati prati labhya kamam ridroga mashwa pahinoti achirena dhira. The the transcendental form of bhakti comes in the heart. and kicks out the lower taste of lust which is what is shackling everyone in this world even shila prabhupad has said if someone is agitated by lust then they must hear and read the pastimes of krishna with the gopis but again um it's it's not a blanket statement it must be done under guidance anugatya hmm? as rupa goswami has also said uh, in the eighth verse of the upadesha amrita तन्नामा रूप चरितादि सुकीर्तनानु स्मृत्यो क्रमेण रसना मनसि नियोज्य तिष्ठन व्रजे तद अनुरागी जनानुगामी अंडर गाइडेंस ऑफ अ एग्जाल्टेड एट लीस्ट अ मध्यम अधिकारी मध्यम मध्यम एज शिला विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर डिस्क्राइब्स बीइंग अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ अ एग्जाल्टेड स्टडी फिक्स्ड अप डिवोटी अकॉर्डिंग टू सिद्धांत एंड रस तत्व एंड अंडर हिज गाइडेंस सर्विंग हियरिंग हरि कथा देन सम इट मे स्टार्ट विद सम Uh, theoretical understanding but then by doing bhajan chanting the holy name and serving the sadhus in those conceptions then some realization may come so i think this is uh, this is the higher taste that krishna is talking about vishaya vini vartante niraharasya dehinam raso varjyam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate this param drishti para drishti is given through shukdev goswami and by prabhupad as shripad madhavananda prabhu was explaining through the krishna book prabhupad has opened the doors uh, to uh, braja prem to the whole world So these are my thoughts to begin with. Beautiful, thank you, Varendra Prabhu. Yeah, when you're talking about the conservative and liberal, uh, which is a constant tension, one thing that has struck me in the last uh, few months is that although we have the word conservative, you know, just cons- being conservative is not enough to conserve. So <laughs> yes, it's important. We say conservative means to preserve, but uh, things change things change say if you have a garden you want to protect the garden but sometimes to protect the garden also means to let the garden grow it doesn't mean just to keep it in the same condition and the atmospheric conditions change say in heat the garden needs a particular kind of things to nourish in cold it needs a particular kind of things to nourish so in one sense conserving itself involves both keeping both pre- it involves to some extent keep some things unchanging and keep something be adapt so so it's important that uh, so for for preserving this bhakti lata beej in our heart or the bhakti lata beej that is passed down in our tradition at one side we need to protect the right understanding but to protect the right understanding that right understanding has to be imparted if you just keep saying that don't no don't have the wrong understanding but then who is going to give the right understanding it's a very important point and then second point is this particular verse probably will come back to this again it's such a vital verse Mm-hmm. because it's it's in one sense so counterintuitive that the ras leela at a mundane level appears to be interaction between males and females and normally hearing about that increases the desires uh, increases the desire to engage uh, at that level with someone but the ras leela is promising the opposite result so this was in that sense indicates very boldly the transcendental nature of the ras leela itself so we i think we'll come back to this later but yes this is so we can say our discussion that we are trying to have is also meant for this purpose uh, that how we can bhaktim param lagvati pratilabhya kamam how can we increase our devotion and how can we remove the selfish desires from our heart so yes true madhavendra you want to comment reflect on your anything said and spoken till now yeah I, 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur, since we're, we're, we, we should stress it's a good thing to start, I think, if we're going to have this discussion, it's good to start with some caution. Are you still there? Yes, yes. Okay. Some funny happening with my screen. Uh, Bhaktivinoda, in Chaitanya Sikshamrita, he says very strongly, Jada Bada Jiva Krishna Lila Shravane Anadikari, that someone who's a, a Bada Jeev, who's conditioned by this material nature, Krishna Lila Shravane Anadikari, they have no qualification to hear Krishna's pastimes. And Bhaktivinoda stresses that in, in his comment. He says, not everybody's qualified to read these things daily. And especially he's referring there to Ashtakaliya Smarna, which is uh, something which requires some qualification. But when we look at this important verse, which Amarendra Prabhu thankfully brought up, first of all, the context of the verse is very interesting. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that Maharaj Parikshit, he was looking around while Sukadev Goswami was speaking all these things about the gopis and how Sukadev Goswami is speaking about how Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is uh, having uh, some meetings and exchanges with all these married ladies. And Maharaj Pariksha is looking around, he sees so many conservative sadhus and sages there who they want to stress Vanashram Dharma, they want to stress marriage and, and sanctity of the marriage vows and things. And he saw that they may be becoming a little disturbed. So he said, well, is this okay to do? And then, Mar and then Sukadev Goswami replied with this verse, and it's very, very important, this phrase, Shadandito Nishaned Atevarna Yedya, that Varna Yedya, we should hear this with faith. It means we have to have some person that we have faith in that we're hearing from. And therefore, we find in, in some universities, they study the Gopi Gita. They study the Rasa Panchadhyaya, but if they're not hearing from a devotee in, in our line, they're not hearing from someone in the line of Rupa Goswami, and they're not hearing with faith, then they're not going to understand it properly. So this is, this is uh, such a very, very important point. Yes. So now, so if we consider the caution, the purpose of the caution is that uh, my understanding would be twofold. First is that there is the default tendency within us and with as uh, living beings in the material world to get agitated because there are impressions in our mind. And in some ways, among the various pastimes of Krishna, the pastimes with the gopis can easily be misunderstood. So when Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying that you don't have that, we don't have the adhikar to hear. So at one level, we can say that, uh, uh, yes, we don't have the adhikar, but how are we ever going to get the adhikar? It is through purification and purification also happens through the practice of bhakti. So, you know, I write on the Gita every day. So one article I wrote some time ago is that in bhakti, we are always unqualified, but we are never disqualified. So I think we can have that mood. We don't have the qualification, but that doesn't mean we are ruled out. We are rejected. So we still have the opportunity with the blessings of senior devotees and the blessings of Paracharyas to try to enter and try to gain some understanding. There's also a danger in bhakti, which Bhaktivinoda Thakur brings out in Chaitanya Sikshamrita, which is the obstacle on our path known as Denukasura. In Denukasura, he, when he sees the boys climbing in the trees and getting the tall fruits, he becomes very, very agitated. And he starts complaining as only a donkey can, <laughs> making his very loud hee-haw kind of sound, protesting, you can't do that. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur comments that this represents an obstacle to bhakti, wherein we want to stay in a lower rung. We become envious when we see people going for the fruits, something higher, and we just want to make a noise complaining about it. Again, as all of us have been commenting, the problem is not with the subject matter. The subject matter shouldn't be lost, as Amarendra Prabhu was so nicely stating, but it has to be presented anugatya with guidance. It has to be presented in the right way. And then it's, it's so important. And brand new people, the devotees were going in the 60s and 70s to rock concerts. I used to do it myself sometimes. And you go to places and, and, and it looked like there was a cloud. 
it's like there's a fog. The fog was marijuana smoke. <laughs> and you're a poor brahmachari. You go into these cars, and sometimes it's couples doing things we don't want to talk about in the car when you walk up there. They're going there for a rock concert, and they're coming there to give them this Krishna book. <laughs> and uh, people were taking it, and we want them to read it. And Prabhupada knew that they were so grossly unqualified, but he still wanted them to have that Krishna book. Otherwise, what is the hope for them? If we don't have, if we can't talk about the gopis, if nobody understands the excellence, the ultimate perfection of their love, then what example do we have? If we just have some kind of rather impersonal understanding that God is there in a cloud, like we see in a lot of Western religions, and, and there's no reciprocation so much with his devotees, there's no example of the great devotees, then how are people going to become attracted? If we don't understand something about the gopis and Radha, then what is the difference between us and the Sri Vaishnavas or the Madhva Vaishnavas? What is the speciality of Gaudiya Vaishnavas? If all that we can talk about is Vanashram Dharma and regulated principles, which are important, but then how are we any different than so many Hindus and so many impersonalists? Oh, one difference is that a lot of the impersonalists, sometimes they follow those principles better than the devotees. Bhakti okay, okay. Vinod brings that point up. I would also like to add, if, if that's okay. Yeah, please, please. At this point, yeah. I, I also feel that in all our temples, we have Radha Krishna on the altar. The songs that we sing glorify Radha Krishna. We say, hey, Krishna, Karuna, Sindhu, and Tapta, Kanchana, Gaurangi. But at the same time, when, let's say, an outsider comes and asks us a question, uh, who is Radha? Then it's almost like shivers down the spine. <laughs> And and then if this question is extended further, wait a minute, who are those two, uh, you know, Matajis on either side, Lalita and Vishaka, uh, then, you know, it's almost we are evaporating out of fear. And then what to speak of Ashtasakis in Mayapur, and then 16,108 gopis. And then when we have people saying that this is Krishna's lusty, or we say, why did Krishna not marry Radha? What is Parakiya Bhav? Why did, how is Radha, if, if Radha, if Rukmini was married by Krishna, then why don't you have Rukmini on the altar and why Radha? Why did Prabhupada say Radha Shamsundar and Radha Raspihari and Radha Madhav? So I think every ISKCON devotee should be able to stand up and protect the integrity of the deities and the sampradaya that we are fortunate to be part of. Anybody coming from outside and asking questions about why do you have these sections in your scriptures? Um, we should have uh, the right arrows to protect our 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 lordships, and and um, it's it's important I think to note who is speaking the Gopi Geet, who is narrating this section, and it's interesting at the start of the Raspanchadhyay, it doesn't say Shuka Uvacha, it doesn't say Rishi Uvacha, it says Badarayani Uvacha, mm -hmm. and Badarayani is a name of Shukadev Goswami being the son of Vyasadev. Vyasadeva is called Badarayana. He's called Badarayana because he took shelter of the Badara trees in the middle of the forest, praying and begging to get a son who can carry this current ahead. And as the fulfillment of his austerity, the son who appeared to fulfill that mission is Shukadev. Therefore, he's called Badarayani. And how detached is he? He can't even know the difference between male and female. As soon as he appears, you know, He's even giving up the association of his own father. He doesn't even have clothes on. What to speak of clothes on? He doesn't even know if his body is on or off. That's the level of his realization for Shukadeva Goswami. And he's speaking. And who is listening to this? It is Parikshit Maharaj. Someone who saw Vishnu Ratena Samprishto Bhagavan Badarayani. Someone who saw the Supreme Lord while being in the womb. Now we are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam to see Krishna someday. And here is someone who saw Krishna hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So he definitely knows the difference between Gramya Katha and Krishna Katha. So the speaker is that exalted. <laughs> the, 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 the Vama Hasta Vilasa Shuka, sitting on the left hand of Srimati Radharani, the, the parrot, comes in this world as Shukadev Goswami. That's the, the caliber of the speaker. And the caliber of the listener is someone who, is, who has seen the Supreme Lord, and at the same time, he is on his departing bed, like on, on his departure bed. He is almost departing in another two days. So even conditioned souls like me on my departure bed, on my deathbed, will not like to hear some mundane romance of any boy and girl of this world. 
what to speak of parikshit maharaj and let's say shukadev goswami went off topic let's say parikshit maharaj went off balance you have narada muni and parashara muni and all these great vyasadev himself all these great vaishnavas sitting in the assembly and where is all this happening it's happening on the banks of the ganga even a conditioned soul will not speak things like this on the banks of the ganga if it's mundane and on the banks of the ganga shukadev goswami badarayani speaks to parikshit maharaj protected by the lord himself in the womb in the assembly of great sages while he is departing and then that and I, it's not that he's speaking off topic he's building canto 1 to canto 9 and then after that after speaking braja leela he can just dip down with rasabhas to kama shastra speaking mundane uh, romantic lusty affairs of boys and girls in this world so the rasa is just going higher and higher and higher and exploding at the gopi geet so i think we need to if not understand the 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 details at least understand as devotees in the gaudiya parampara have the foundation ready irrespective of whoever that is because if there's an attack tomorrow on our siddhanta we should be able to stand in the middle of the street and protect the integrity of all the great acharyas who lived lives writing commentaries on these sections and let's say everyone went wrong let's say vyasadev went wrong shukadev goswami went wrong parikshit maharaj went wrong ganga devi did not object and all the sages let's say they all went wrong what is speak of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu he relished this this is how when the gopi geet was sung he embraced maharaj pratap rudra tava katha amrita shloka raja je padila uthi prema veshe prabhu alingana kaila kaviraj goswami says mahaprabhu accepted maharaj pratap rudra on the basis of the gopi geet and then let's say mahaprabhu was also off track now i'm playing the devil's advocate here not not sounding offensive but just the devil's advocate all our acharyas they live their lives writing commentaries so first of all i think we have to everyone must understand the sanctity the transcendence the unparalleled unparalleled transcendental position of krishna's dealing with the gopis who is krishna who are the gopis what is brindavan what is prem tatva what is shrimad bhagavatam and what is the ras panchadhi and then maybe the the details can be left for 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 the future time to come but at least this fundamental understanding should be there but if this is not there then neither can we benefit others in our preaching when these topics are asked nor can we protect our siddhanta from the attacks of uh, the atheists and nor can we go deeper in our own faith because with time we ourselves are not convinced so i think uh, our acharyas have toiled whether it's in sanskrit whether it's in bengali whether it's in english by shila prabhupa so mm-hmm. i think these topics are uh, very important may not be in all assemblies but they must be discussed so mm-hmm. some thoughts mm-hmm. yes bro thank you so both ways to give what is special and to defend what is evident what he said what vandan pro said that the gaudiya tradition what is its special contribution so we need to give that and also because the radha krishna deities are already there so it's important for us to defend thank you narendra prabhu so madhavan prabhu you had mentioned that you, do you want to respond to what he said or you have yes yeah, I, i just like to offer a quick comment that we know things within the box of our vision what we've experienced and for the most part most of our iskand devotees are 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 new to bhakti and we accept what she looked propad gave is absolute but we don't sometimes see the context of shila propad gave it in for example the song jai radha madhav is not sung in most uh, godia mat temples because it's considered to be too confidential too oh, intimate okay. a song for example the, the tulsi prayers that we have they're outlawed <laughs> in most of godia mat temples they have another song that they sing because this song is all about manjari bhav and gopi bhav and and it's, it's a very very intimate very very high song but shila prampad gave that to these drunken drug crazed hippies <laughs> in the very beginning prampad obviously had some vision if you come which you all should to jagannath puri or so many temples in india if, if you go to the jagannath mandir as we were speaking recently with some devotees about uh you'll find erotic sculptures on the outside of the jagannath temple 
If you go to Konark, you'll find like if you go to Alanath, you go if you go to the Bhubanesh, for example, you find so many temples all over India, you'll find that. What do those sculptures mean? They're ultimately for, for the Gaudi of Aishnavas, they're referring to Madurja Ras and the Gopis. We should understand that this is part of our culture. It, it, during a Rathiatra, there's a tradition where they have a speaker on the cart and he speaks all kinds of uh, nasty kind of things. He speaks about very intimate topics between the boys and girls. How do we understand those things? There's a different perspective in Vaishnav and Vedic culture than we generally have coming from the West. We should bear in mind what Srila Prabhupada gave, but at the same time, we should also understand that these things are, are not illegal. Prabhupada gave Jairada Mata, Prabhupada gave the, you know, our Tulsi prayers for a reason. And as you, you were mentioning, both of you, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Alingana, he embraced Maharaj Prata Paruja when, when he when he sang his Tabakutnamu Kintapajivana verses. My Guru Maharaj, once I asked him a very uh, controversial question. <laughs> I, I was doing some research and some studying about things, and I asked him if it was okay for me to read Govinda Lilamrita. Once Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati uh, came to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and said that he'd like to print Govinda Lilamrita. And Bhaktivinoda said, very good idea. You should make two copies, one for you and one for me. <laughs> it's a very confidential book. And I, I, my grandmother was encouraging me to read different things. And I thought, well, I'll just push the button. What about Govinda Lilamrita? And he said, yes. And I said, but grandmother, that's a very high book. And then he pointed out to me something very important. He said, there's so much of it given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I'd like to suggest that this is a doorway through which we can go to access these topics. We have to go through Guru Goranga. We can't try to access these topics in any other way. When we take devotees around in Parikrama, here in Jagannath Puri, we present it in a certain frame, in a box. It's like a painting. If it has a frame, it becomes more beautiful, and you can understand the context of the painting. So we present it like this. We call it the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem. That this is a university. The, the purpose of this place for us we can go at it through what, Bhakti, what Prabhupada calls smarta vichar, or the attitude of the, the smarta brahmins, or we can approach it through what Prabhupada called Goswami vichar. And we want to approach through the Goswami vichar. We want to go through that door. So the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem means this is a place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach us how to do bhajan. And each different tirtastali is a classroom in that university which represents, and this is the way we present it, a particular lesson in bhajan for us to approach braj. And it begins, the first school is, is the Jagannath Mandir, which has several different lessons, one of which is it represents organized religion, which has problems. But in spite of all the problems in organized religion, they wouldn't allow Haridas Thakur inside, Rupa and Sanatana Goswami couldn't go inside. Still, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, according to Lochandas Thakur and Chaitanya, Tanya Munga was going there four times a day. They have Darshan, the Lord Jagannath. He was supporting organized religion. But nearby, he had another place, which is the Gambira, which was very, very intimate. So we need both. That's, that's a conclusion we can come to right away. And one of the classrooms in the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem is Jagannath Vallabha Gardens. And that's the place where the Gita, uh, Gopi Geet, was spoken. And this Gopi Geet is a very integral part of Gora Lila. We may say, oh, I, I can't read this section of the Bhagavatam, but are, are you going to read Chaitanya Charitamrita? <laughs> are you going to try to approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And if you don't try to approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then how are you a Gaudiya Vaishnav? What are you living for? How, how are we going to make any progress at all? So what is that that in the 14th chapter of the Madhya Leela, which comes just after the Rathiatra festival, Madhya 13, mm -hmm. we hear about Mahaprabhu uh, during the Rathiatra. If we say that Jagannath Puri is Vipralambaketra, which is a phrase given by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, or Vipralambaketra, you may say, uh, the place of separation, the ocean of separation, the highest wave in that ocean would be the Rathiatra festival. 
And that Rathiatra represents both union and separation at the same time. Union is there because it represents the mood of the gopis meeting Krishna Kurukshetra. But there's also separation because they're very conscious that you left us. They're very conscious that in a few days you're going to go back again to Dwarka. So the Rathiatra represents bringing Krishna to, the, to our hearts, to the village of Vrindavan, which represents our hearts. And there's union and feelings of separation there. So the climax of that comes in the Gopi Gita. And, and Jiva Goswami, in, in his commentary, in the first verse of Gopi Gita, he points out that the gopis are saying that, that let, let our words be known. Huh? Because people who hear this Gopi Gita who are suffering from separation, they're going to get some mitigation from their suffering. There's some purpose to this. In our, in our uh, 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 BBT uh, uh, chapter summary, it describes about this chapter that there's a purpose to this Gopi Gita, that it helps people to understand separation, it helps them to come together with Krishna. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, I'm told, once said that you should not speak about topics of Radha and Krishna in public. He said, but if you speak about separation, there's some context for that. Because if you don't speak about separation, then how are we going to understand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Mm -hmm. Because Radha Bhava Dhuti Suvalitam, Nomi Krishna Suvalitam. If you don't understand Radha, you can't understand Garanga Mahaprabhu. And conversely, if you don't understand Mahaprabhu, you can't understand Radharani. So if the highest wave in this ocean of separation is a Rathiatra, then the peak of that wave happens in Jagannath Vallabha Gardens. When Maharaj Prataparudra goes there and he speaks this Gopi Geet to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then Mahaprabhu says, Buri Dajana, Buri Dajana, you are the most munificent person because you're giving me this Gopi Geet. How do we understand that? Is this just a nice story? Well, that's it's some history. I can go there and visit the place and and read something about it. It has some relevance for me. And what it means is that even though you may be uh, the king of poor, you may be something which is considered a very mundane person. Mahaprabhu refused to see Lord, uh, Jag Gajapati Maharaj, uh, the king of poor, uh, Maharaj Pratiparudra. You may be very fallen in the sense that you have lots of wives and you're dealing with mundane things. But if you sing this Gopi Geet, for the pleasure of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that's a very important, subtle point. In, in, Govinda Lilamrita is there in Chaitanya Chaitamrita in the Gambira. It's being spoken by Srub Damodar and Roy Ramananda, and they're not singing it for their pleasure. That's the first thing. We're not, we shouldn't be singing these things for our pleasure, but we do it for the pleasure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, this is the Gambira Bhajan Pranali. Sometimes devotees, they think that, that all these things are illegal, but how can we approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu unless we understand the, the Gambira? Gora Leela, in that sense, we say it's like a cake, and a cake has two parts. It has the bread part, the sponge part, and it has the icing part, and the bigger part is the sponge part. And similarly, we have two Vaishnavas who approach Gora Leela, and some just want the, the bread part, and they say that, that that the, the icing part is illegal. The icing part means the, the, uh, the very sweet, intimate pastimes in the Gambira. And the, in the bread part, that's Mahaprabhu's preaching and speaking about Bhagavad Gita and doing Rathiatra in public with so many people. And generally, we see that there's certain Vaishnavas, a lot of the Babajis, they like the icing part, and they're not so much interested in the bread part. And then some other Vaishnavas, especially in Gaudiya Math and Iskand, we stress the bread part, but both have to be there. If you only have the sponge part of the cake, any child can tell you it's very, very dry. Or if you just only try to eat the icing, how many kgs of icing can you eat? <laughs> You're going to become very, very sick. Both things are required. So there, there has to be, we have to have some understanding of these intimate pastimes also. And if we approach them in the mood that we hear that Sri Dhamma and Ray Ramananda are doing, they're not reciting it because, wow, this is really erotic. I really like this. They're, even, they're not even thinking, I'm going to make advancement by reading this. Some devotees, they, they read the books because I'm going to make advancement. They're speaking these things for the pleasure of Mahaprabhu, as a service for Mahaprabhu. 
Hmm. And so it's a lesson that we can learn. Maharaj Pratipurudu is approaching in that way. He pleases Mahaprabhu, and that thereby he makes a connection with Mahaprabhu. He's accepted, whereas before Mahaprabhu wouldn't accept him. I don't want to even see the face of a king. You're a Vishay, you're a materialistic person. You, you're dealing with politics. You're dealing with women and money and so many things. Another point that we could understand from this pastime within this the context of the, the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem is who is Maharaj Pratipurudra? According to Kavi Karnapur and Gaur Ganadesh Deepika, he's Indra Maharaj. So what is the context if we see him as Indra Maharaj? Indra Maharaj is that personality who brought Lord Jagannath. He's responsible mm. for having the deity that Daru brought and Lord Jagannath being brought there. So he's, he's giving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Jagannath Krishna, in the form now of the Gopi Geet. So if we recite Gopi Geet for the pleasure of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada, we must be very, very pleased, as Amarandra was saying, instead of reciting something, Netflix or, or some news or sports or something, we're, we're reciting Prabhupada's books, which also in the BBT commentary, the first verse, it speaks about, and they're paraphrasing Jiva Goswami and Sanatana Goswami and Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's commentaries, how sweet the Gopi Gita is and how it, it, it should be recited. And understanding this, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, he famously made a wonderful recording of the Gopi Gita, which is listened to in many different temples. So that, that's wonderful. We should have that. But Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, you're, you're conveying this meeting with the, between the three of us because we have Bhakti Charu Maharaj reciting Gopi Geet, Prabhupada, or the BBT commentary saying we should recite it, but what does it mean? <laughs> and if we don't have some understanding of what it means and what context it's in, and therefore I would like to suggest that if we see the Gopi Geet as an integral part of Gora Leela, if we see the Gopi Geet, the recitation of it, as Maharaj Pratipurudra was doing, as a doorway for us to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they make a connection with him, then I, I, I think that's a door I can go through. Mm. Yes, ma'am. That's a very striking point about what you said just now. Jagannath Puri, University of Rajapreva, that itself is striking. And uh, this is your terminology, I presume. Prabhu, mm. this is your terminology. Uh, the the, the uh, Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, so at the point that I thought of, you know, it was very striking is that ultimately it's uh, it's this is the heart of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, when you're speaking about that, what I start of if we are going to talk about love and uh, selfless love or divine love, the highest exemplars are the gopis. So we get that example from many places and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself considered it so special that he wanted to explore it. So in one sense, if we are not, if we are, we don't try to understand it at least, then we are, how are we really following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So as you said, we're doing it for pleasure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's how we follow him. So I think uh, overall, this uh, level of contextualization was vital. Uh, if you, Amarindra, you want to add anything more on this? Sure, sure Prabhuji. Yeah, I, I really like this point of doing bhajan for the pleasure of Mahaprabhu. Uh, I was speaking to this uh, senior devotee, uh, very exalted devotee, and I asked him, we were just confidentially talking, and I said, I have no taste in chanting. And he's someone who's chanting, I think, two lakh every day. <laughs> so I asked him, um, if, if you may so bless me with this... Um, with this mood to chant, uh, what's, what's, your, what's your thought process? How do you want to chant? Why do you want to chant? So he said there could be different reasons to chant. He said you can have different people. Either you can have the con consciousness of chanting. I don't want to go to hell for the reactions that are coming. So the holy name will protect me. But he said that's like using a brahmastra to kill a mosquito. I really like that. He said, it's like using a Brahmastra to kill a mosquito. He said, the name of Krishna is like a Brahmastra. It's a very powerful atomic, spiritual atomic bomb. And uh, reactions from the past are like mosquitoes. Don't do that. Then he said, there are those who chant the holy name 
just out of responsibility that they have given their word to their Guru Maharaj and they have in, they got initiated. So I must keep my word. I've got a human form. It's out of responsibility. Like Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, there are four levels in which you can operate bhakti in one out of fear, one out of duty, uh, one, one out of the fourth is out of fear. The third is uh, to fulfill a material desire. The second is out of duty. And the first is out of love. So he, he went through all of that. He said, you can chant out of fear that I don't want to go to hell. So, oh, Krishna, nay, oh, Krishna Nam, please protect me. Or he said the third uh, context after the fourth would be if I chant, I can fulfill um, whatever is lacking in my life. Whatever material desires I have, they will be fulfilled. The second would be out of duty. And he said the first is out of love. So he said, we should rise to the first. So I said, then how do we do that? He said, I'll tell you what I do. He said, Mahaprabhu says, Mukhe hari bol bhai, e matra chai. That the only arms I'm begging as a sannyasi is you please chant. So he said, I almost envision Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur at my doorstep. And he said, do you want them to ring your doorbell and fall at your feet? And make you chant. He said, no, open the door and chant that Nitai, oh Haridas, oh Mahaprabhu, is that all is, is that all that you want from me? You want me to chant? I will chant. And then he said, Didn't Mahaprabhu have this mood right from childhood? When there used to be Kirtan, he used to smile, and when there is no Kirtan, he used to start crying as Nimai Vishwambar. So he said, So I should I, I think that if I stop chanting, my Mahaprabhu is crying. And if I start chanting, he is smiling as a baby. And then as Sri Krishna Chaitanya, all that he wants as a Yativara Shiromani, the best among sannyasis, all that he wants from me is to chant. So I just chant for his pleasure. So I think that conception that I received from him was resonating with the point that you just made. To do bhajan, Krishna Bhakti for the pleasure of Mahaprabhu. I'm also reminded of how Prabodhananda Saraswati, he, he mentions Yatha Yatha Gaurapadara Vinde, Vindeta Bhaktim Krita Punya Rashi. He gives a very beautiful transcendental example of, of the gravitational pull, the effect of the gravitational pull that the moon has on the waves of the ocean. It says, as the moon increases in size, the attractive potency to invoke the waves and tides in the ocean also increases. So he mentions that the ocean is actually the ocean of Krishna Bhakti, Radha Krishna Bhakti. And the moon represents Gaurav Bhakti. So as the moon of our Gaura Prem or Gaura Bhakti increases qualitatively and quantitatively, it will automatically pull tides and waves on the ocean of Radha Dasyam. So with you to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So I think that connection between Mahaprabhu's pleasure of Mahaprabhu and approaching the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu automatically bringing in waves and tides of um, um, emotional ecstasies towards Krishna Leela is, is making sense. And also I'm reminded how Pr Prabodhananda Saraswati in uh, Navadvip Shataka, he makes this point that Aradhitam Navavanam Vrajakana Naste, Naraditam Navavanam Vraja Eva Dure, Aradito Dvijasuto Vrajanagaraste, Naradito Dvijasuto Nataveha Krishna. He says that if the 12 forests of Brindavan have to be worshipped, then just worship the nine islands of Navadvip. <laughs> He says, Aradhitam Navavanam. If the nine forests in the nine islands of Navadvip are worshipped, then Vrajakananaste, the Vrajakanana, the forests of Braja are worshipped. And if Naraditam Navavanam, if, if we kind of bypass or by, boycott Gaurav Tattva and Gaurav Dham, Vraja Eva Dure, the conception of Braja Bhakti is far away. And Aradhito Dvijasuta, if we worship the son of Jagannath Mishra, the, the best among Brahmanas, which is Mahaprabhu, then Vrajanagaraste. That's the worship of the hero of Vrindavan, Krishna. And Naradita Dvijasuto, if we don't worship and we don't serve Mahaprabhu, Nataveha Krishna, then our Krishna Bhakti will not sustain and not uh, pass the test of time. So I think uh, these are some thoughts that uh, I feel inspired to share. In, in, in line with approaching Gauralila, um, Gopi Geet and the Ras Panchadhyay and the, uh, the, the confidential pastimes of Krishna in Braja through the beautiful, wonderful door of Gauralila. Mm -hmm. I think it's like Gauralila is the torch to get to the, the dark, uh, confidential groves of Vrindavan, which is dark, 
<laughs> the night of Sharad Purnima, the, the groves are dark, but the torch of Gauru Bhakti uh, helps the Gaudiya Vaishnav navigate through these, not just through the groves, but also through the verses of Gopikit. Hmm. And the, the person holding that torch is Gurudev. He's guiding us. And therefore, Chaitanya Chaitamrita says, Tati Krishna Bhaji Kodi Guru Sevan. That what is my Guru Seva? That's my Nam Bhajan. What is my Nam Bhajan? That's my Guru Seva. This is the, the important quality given by Gaudiya Vaishnava is that Krishna himself has come in the mood of Radha, Shiradiya Pranaya Mahima Kiddhisovanaya, to try to understand these three things. He's come to do Radha Bhajan. As uh, one commentator describes, that this is why he appeared during the, the uh, Chandra Grahana. Chandra Grahana means Grahana means to grasp, and he, he, Mahaprabhu came because Chandra Chandra refers to Radha, who's like a moon, and he wants people to be able to grasp Radha. And how, how can we grasp Radha by doing Krishna Bhajan? He wants to give us Radha, not that we come and we do Radha Bhajan, because Radha Rani won't appreciate that. If you do Radha Bhajan, Krishna will be pleased. But we do Krishna Bhajan and Radharani becomes pleased and we get her mercy. So similarly, if we do this Nam Bhajan, just as any book distributor can tell you, when you go on the street, you give someone a book, you tell them something, they say, wow, this is great. What should I do? And then you say, well, I have this card, chant this mantra, and you give them, and they say, wow, and they start chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. How happy you feel. This is the perfection of my life. Somebody's chanted the Hare Krishna mantra. But I'm just a dull, mundane creature. How happy my Guru Dave must feel when he sees me chanting. So this chanting, as Amaranda was beautifully pointing out, I, I can just, just imagine Nittai and Haridas coming to my door. <laughs> Am I going to refuse? Am I going to close the door? I, I have to, before they come, I, I want to say, yes, I've already given. I, I'll give more and more. What, what, do we, what can I give to you? So this is the alms my Guru Dave is asking. Also, and because he's doing it, this is the kirtan of our sampradaya, that all the gopis, they're trying to assist Radharani in her feelings of separation. And then when, when Krishna comes in the mood of Radha, the same gopis come, Lita comes as Shrupa Dhamadara, Vishaka comes as, as uh, Roy Ramananda, and Rupa Manjari comes as Rupa Goswami, Tulsi Manjari comes as Raghunath Das Goswami and others. And they're assisting Krishna in those feelings of separation to do that Nam Bhajan so that he can taste that. And then they're engaging their assistants who are engaging their assistants who are engaging their assistants who are engaging Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati who's engaging Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada is engaging our Guru Janas. This is the kirtan of our Sampradaya. We're all doing this, we're engaged in this kirtan to help uh, Krishna to taste the mood of Radha. We're all doing this kirtan to help alleviate those pangs of separation. Because there's union in that Hare Krishna mantra, but there's also separation. This, my grandma used to say, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and this is Jagannath Puri. There's two opposites in one container, both union and separation. That's, that's our Hare Krishna mantra. And that's Gopi Gita. I was, I was, I was just actually going to say that. I was, I was actually thinking how wonderfully Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu is connecting that the Sankirtan movement of Mahaprabhu is none different than the Gopi Geet on the banks of the Yamuna, because there's so much similarity between the two. One, there's darkness in the night of Sharat Purnima, so that we could say, well, that's the darkness of Kali Yuga, of Tamas. That's transcendental darkness, and this is material darkness, of course, in this world. So the darkness of Kali Yuga here, and then there's the darkness of the night there. Gopis are in union which means Sangha Kirtan, not Japa, but Samyak Kirtan and Sangha Kirtan, complete Kirtan, but in congregational chanting. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is saying very wonderfully, Iti Gopya Pragayanta Pralapantya Chitradha Ruruduhu Suswaram Rajan Krishna Darshana Lalasa Tasam Avir Bhu Chauri Smayamana Mukhambujam Pitam Varadhara Shragvi Sakshad Man Matha Man Matha The two verses of the 32nd chapter after the the Gopi Geet, in fact, the, the, the reunion, let's say, of Krishna coming back and meeting the gopis. So that is, those are the three ingredients of the Sankirtan movement of Mahaprabhu. What are the three ingredients? Shukdev Goswami says that the gopis had three moods. One, iti gopya pragayantya, they were singing. 
they were nicely singing and how were they singing from the throat but at the same time pralapantyascha chitra ruruduhu they were crying so there were many words which were coming from the throat and there were a lot of emotions rolling down the cheek in the form of tears so one voice very sweet singing of the names of krishna two tears rolling from the eyes and three the heart desires hmm, uh, krishna darshana lalasa the desire to see krishna so it's almost like the eyes the throat and the heart are in the same line the tears coming from the eyes the throat which is singing and and imbued with so much ecstatic love in the form of sankirtan and the heart longs for the darshan of krishna and when these three things are together tasam avir bhut shauri the hero appeared to the scene it's almost like sarcasm shukdev goswami is speaking from the side of the gopis that now after making my radhika cry now comes the hero <laughs> tasam avir bhut shauri the shauri appeared and smayamana mukham vujjam with a smile that i am being defeated sakshad man matha man matha hmm? the 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 cupid of all cupids so that's mahaprabhu's movement where we come together with devotees who are the gopis in the dark night of sharad purnima which is kali yuga and we have crying as shila gorgovind the maharaj used to say it's bilva mangala cried the druva cried without crying you won't get krishna it's the crying school at bhuvaneshwar so the three things in kirtan is crying feeling a connect with krishna throat calling out the names it's not mental meditation it's not silent meditation it's articulating the names of krishna and it's with all our heart as krishna says aham um, sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buda bhava samanvita with bhav they do bhajan priti purvakam so mahaprabhu taught this so we we see a parallel of mahaprabhu's naam sankirtan with the gopi geet and then it's wonderful that krishna comes after that so we are in that situation as shripad madhavananda prabhu was talking about the mode of separation we are separated from krishna krishna bahirmukh jeev bhoga bancha kare nikatastha maya tare jhapatiya dhare you are separated from krishna and the gopis are in the forest and we are in the forest of material enjoyment <laughs> in the night darkness of uh, avidhya with mm-hmm. like minded devotees crying singing and feeling on the banks of yamuna which is yamuna represents bhakti and then we are we are uh, calling out to krishna and then gives a hope that krishna will come back so yeah this is beautiful if you see the 10th canto uh, the 10th canto rendition that prabhupada has done in krishna book there prabhupada says actually that a prabhupada translates the gopi geet and in that word the end he says in this way the gopis chanted hare krishna hare krishna the prabhupada <laughs> gives the full mantra over there <laughs> so this is a beautiful explanation of in one sense the essential elements of doing kirtan and the essential elements of the gopi geet are the same and ultimately this is krishna appears after the gopi geet so similarly we can also pray that krishna will appear through our calling out to him through chanting as well as through the gopi geet when we discuss it mm-hmm. thank you madhavendra amarendra prabhu yes madhavendra please Yeah I uh, I was just thinking Amarendra Prabhu's uh, wonderful analogy about the darkness in in uh, Tamagoon and Kali Yuga and that and how there's two gopi geets we could say in the Bhagavatam as chapter 31 of the 10th canto and chapter 35 two songs of separation and in the 35th chapter it's it's a little different the gopis are singing when Krishna's gone to the forest for the day and in that chapter there's 26 verses 24 which is spoken by the gopis one which begins with shukadev goswami and shukadev goswami finishes it at the end and uh jiva goswami I believe it is comments that there's 24 verses and these 24 verses represent the 24 hours of the day 12 hours of the night and 12 hours of the day and this is the gopis they're completely absorbed and these two things are there both union and separation together and this has to be there's my grandmother would comment this uh there's a prema dwara or the river of love which has two embankments so you, the embankment of, of sambhog tata and the embankment of vipalamba both things have to be there otherwise the river can't continue hmm which which 20 or verses are you referring to in this context that's from chapter 35 the 10th canto 
There's 26 verses in that chapter, but 24 is spoken by the gopis. And that's also, how does, how does the BBT translate? The gopis sing of Krishna as he wanders in the forest. Okay. It's a second kind of gopi gate. Oh, okay. There is one before also in the 19th also is there where the gopis are captivated by Krishna's flute in the forest. As Krishna is playing the flute mm -hmm. in the forest. Okay. That's amazing. That's true. So, so and I think we discussed, should we go, go into the Gopi Gita now or any more contextualization? I was, I was reminded of uh, Srila Rupa Goswami's um, genius in the Ujjwal Nilamani where he says um, that the nature of love, divine ecstatic love, it's like a snake. He says, Ahir Iva Gatir Premna Swabhava Kuti Lobhavit. <laughs> he says the nature of Krishna Prem is like a snake. It's it moves crooked, but it's actually moving ahead. Every time the snake moves left and the right and takes a left and takes a right, it's actually not taking left or right. It's moving ahead. So it's almost like saying whether the gopis are with Krishna or separated from Krishna. It's like taking right or taking left of the snake of Prem. But one thing is for sure, whether it's union or separation, the snake of divine ecstatic love is only going deeper with meeting with Krishna and separation from Krishna. We could also give an example of, let's say, uh, cutting uh, a log of wood with an axe. Let's say you put the axe into the, the log of wood and then you go ahead and then you go behind and you take it ahead and then take it behind and take it ahead and take it behind. So irrespective of whether the axe moves ahead or whether the axe moves behind. One thing is for sure, the log of wood is getting cut deeper. So whether it's meeting Krishna or it's separation from Krishna, again, only to meet him and only to get separated and only to meet him and only to get separated. The log of Krishna Prem, the wood of Krishna Prem is getting cut deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So, um, so in this way, I think um, um, there are aspects of meeting Krishna but the Gopi Geet is like the peak on the mountain of separation. And where at the end, Krishna meets again. And then there is separation in chapter 35. And then meets again. And then chapters 47 and 39 separation. Again, Krishna's heart, even in Mathura, is with the gopis. And then there's again 47. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is like, is an ocean, but it also goes through the waves of emotions of meeting and separation. So it's, it's like the snake. The, the snake turns left and right and left and right with union and separation only for the ecstatic love to go deeper and, and further than before. It's beautiful. You know, there's a, uh, one of my favorite metaphors for this is love and separation is like separation does to love what wind does to fire. If there's a big forest fire, one of the worst nightmares for the forest fighters is if there is a wind at that time, it just spreads. But however, if the fire is tiny like a candle and wind comes, it will get extinguished. So when our love is strong and the gopi's love is the strongest among all loves for Krishna and our love is strong, it's like a big forest fire. And then separation causes that forest fire to increase more and more. In fact, that's what Krishna says later on when he reappears. And the gopis ask, how could you have left us? The gopis at that time are afraid because if they question Krishna strongly, Krishna may go away again. So they don't want him to go away. But still, they cannot contain the emotion of their heart. So they ask him, how, how could they ask him indirectly? What is the nature of love and lovers who reciprocate or lovers who don't reciprocate? So then he says, actually, I did this out of my love for you. So he causes their love to blaze forward. So at, for us at our level, in one sense, we need association of those who have love for Krishna. Our flame of Krishna Bhakti like a candle. It will get extinguished in separation from devotees. But for the gopis, they are so exalted that their flame blazes forth more and more. I, I find a lot of times devotees have a hard, even devotees have a hard time understanding separation. And we'll hear in the Gopi Gita how the gopis are accusing Krishna that you're trying to kill us. Mm. What a horrific thing. A, a devotee saying God is trying to kill you. He's trying to kill not just any devotees, but he's trying to kill the gopis. Of Vrindavan, how do we understand that? And when we speak about separation, it seems like he's so callous. And as you just touched on a little bit, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, it's actually the mercy of the Lord. There's a couple of beautiful verses that uh, 
are spoken in the by, by uh, Nard Muni in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita. He says it. Pradyatyapi prema krita prihanam vicheda davana la vega tonata santapa jatena duranta shoka vishena gadham bhavataiva dukam. He says, yeah, it, it, it's true no? that this is a nature that prakriti in the beginning, this uh, love, uh, there, when there's some separation, there's some terrible pain. And that terrible pain, he says, it's just like this vicheta, the separation. It's like a davanala, like a terrible burning fire. And that pain of that forest fire of separation causes the most intense dukkha, the most intense type of happiness. But then he goes on to explain in the next verse, tatapi samboga sukad apistuta sokopya nityacha tamo mano tamaha. Pramoda rasi parinamato dhruvam tataspurita rasikaika vedyaha. He says, but their suffering that they're going through, that's actually the greatest happiness. The separation they're going through causes more happiness than uh, the, the enjoyment when they're actually meeting. Right? It's greater, he says, this, than the, than the sambok suk the happiness of meeting, this happiness of separation. And he says, but this is such an inconceivable thing that only those persons, tadrasikaika uh, vedyaha, only persons who are rasik janas, only they can understand this. So this is, this is Gaudiya Vaishnavism. If we don't understand something about separation, then we can't hope to get that topmost thing. And we may be stuck with the, with the, the, the bread of the cake with the sponge of the cake, which is very nice. It's also very important, but we'll miss out on the icing. And so many people may come and they say, yes, this is nice. Bhagavad Gita is very nice in preaching and we're not our body and four regulated principles and we should be vegetarian. But Prabhupada, as you know, when, he, when the devotees approached him in London and said that the Royal Vegetarian Society wants you to come and speak, and Prabhupada said, do they want to hear about Krishna? And they said, well, Prabhupada, I think they want to hear about vegetarianism. And Prabhupada said, we don't care about vegetarianism. Prabhupada sometimes said, we are not vegetarian. That's not our purpose. We're Krishnarian. We take the remnants of Krishna. The gopis are taking the remnants of Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's our purpose as Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And it's nice. We never want to discourage vegetarianism. We never want to discourage Dharma. But that's a sub portion. That's upa dharma for us. It's something which is coming to the real dharma, which is panchama purusharta, which is far beyond the kaitava chattu story, the four types of, of what we consider to be cheating dharma, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. This panchama purusharta is Krishna prem. And to understand that, we have to read this Gopi Gita. So we should, we should read it in a context. We shouldn't go crazy. We shouldn't start trying to imitate something or imagine something. But we should just read it and just take the medicine and see how the medicine affects our consciousness. If I do this thing, then, then bhaktim param bhagavati pratilabhya kam, and that, that topmost bhakti will come. Not just any bhakti, but bhaktim param, the topmost bhakti will come. And rigogam mahasapari not acharena dira, that rig rogue, that disease of the heart will go away. So that means, you know, there are two levels of uh, misconceptions that we need to address that uh, one is that the love between the gopis and Krishna is not mundane. And the second is that this love and separation is actually a form of ecstasy. It's not just agony. It's not just misery. So the first level, of course, is what we have been discussing. And the second level we brought in, maybe one quick metaphor, which I sometimes use to convey this is that we can move forward that, that we have the Bhagavad Gita's 15.1, Urdhva Mula Madha Shakam. This is like an upside down tree. So the word material existence is like an upside down tree. So the, the male female attraction in the world, we can say is like the reflected mango. And the love between Krishna and the gopis, that is like the original mango. So now, as long as we are looking at the reflected mango, till that point, if we even if we look at the original mango, we will think it is like the reflected mango only. And 
so we may equate radha krishna's pastimes with the pastimes uh, with the male female interaction in the world but actually once we understand hey this is the reflection that is the reality then the con- that very conviction that this is the reality will make us detach from the reflection that's why it is anushrunaya advarna yedya that we have to shraddhan with anushrunaya if we hear from faithfully and from proper authorities then they will not just tell the story but they will give the philosophical context by which we'll know these are not they look similar but there is a categorical difference between the two this is reality this is reflection and once a, once we understand that this is the real mango then why would we want to keep chasing the reflection so that's how hearing about this this particular past time will although it's a, it seems to be like a male female track at interaction but it will de- decrease our attraction to that because we will realize this is this is real love this is the pure love which the soul is had, longing for eternally so so that means we do some philosophical systematic philosophical understanding to categorize the difference that the male female attraction in the world are like the reflected mango the at- interaction in krishna and gopis are like the real mango and once that is understood then the more we hear about radha and krishna the more we get a taste for the real mango then naturally the taste for the reflected mango will go away so that's one metaphor for clarifying that and that directly relates with this verse also otherwise that question comes up how do you how is hearing about krishna going to specifically take away karma so you can say it's going to be purification and purification happens at a subtler level but in terms of intellectual conceptualization i found this metaphor quite helpful and the second point about love and separation i think chaitanya charitam also says gives the example of hot sugar cane juice so it's mm. it's hot so it's not exactly pleasant but it's so tasty that you can't step, stop drinking it <laughs> so sometimes you know, to phrase it in another way uh, that we can say it is like, love for krishna is like nectar but when krishna is with when the union with krishna it's like sweet nectar and when separation from krishna it's it seems like bitter nectar the bitter nectar nectar can itself seem like oxymoron how can nectar be bitter but at that time it can seem bitter but still it's nectar it's nourishing the heart like earlier you said about the snake the snake may be moving this way or this way it is moving towards the direct destination so similarly nectar nourishes the soul nectar energizes the soul so whether it is love for krishna or it is union with krishna or separation from krishna samboga viktalamba both of them they may in the moment not taste that sweet union may taste sweet and separation may not taste sweet but in one sense both of them are nourishing the soul and that makes uh, i think krishna prova talks about krishna book that separation from krishna makes us cherish krishna more when we actually unite with him in that sense the love becomes intensified and the experience of love and union becomes much deeper much more deeper and sweeter yeah yes prabhu ji actually in the brihad bhagavata amrita the same section that shripad madhavananda prabhu quoted from um shrila sanatan goswami gives an example um just to uh, bolster the point that uh, we're all discussing he gives the example of touching a block of ice he says that when you touch a block of ice which is very cold it's freezing it is many times the person can get burnt <laughs> shila sanatan goswami says by touching the block of ice which is very cold the person can sometimes get some blisters on the hand and can feel warmth but is there any warmth there no it's actually ice cold so he says oh, so he gives that example to say just like the block of ice is not hot but it may seem to be hot at that freezing point but it's actually cold so similarly separation may seem to be painful but it's like a block of ice it's actually cold but touching that may seem to have externally it may seem that it's going to bring in some blisters or the 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 warmth mm. right or a heat burn but there's actually no burn so separation even kaviraj goswami krishnadas kaviraj goswami he says bahi visha jwala hoy antar anandamoy krishna prema adbhut charit that externally it seems to be like poison it's almost like a jwala it's like a volcanic eruption of poison 
but inside it's an it's a volcanic eruption of happiness and krishna prema adbhuta charit it's it's astonishing that externally it seems to be um, painful but internally it's an explosion of happiness and then kaviraj goswami says only someone who's tasting it knows it because it's visha amrita milan so like our chaitanya charan prabhu was explaining it's, it seems to be paradoxical of uh, bitter nectar actually kaviraj goswami uses that word he says visha amrita milan it's the meeting of poison and nectar hmm. externally it seems to be that the person is crying and weeping in pain in separation from krishna it seems to be like visha like poison but inside he's feeling so much joy he's feeling so much happiness it's like externally he may seem to get the blisters uh, on touching the 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 ice cold block but actually it's cold it's very it's very pleasing and blissful so so it this is this is something that's to be noted and also shri rupa goswami he says na vina vipralambhena sambhoga pushti mashnute that union cannot be nourished without separation na vina vipralambhena vipralambhena vina uh, sambhogam pushtim na it, it cannot you cannot have pushti Uh, pushti karan or vardhi karan they um, they support or let's say they increase in joy just by meeting there must be some separation and then there's there must be meeting uh, there there there's an example that comes to my mind uh, but i will probably keep it for some time later i don't want to ramble longer so if shri pad madhavananda prabhu or chetana charan prabhu want to uh, uh, add and continue uh, i'm completely fine yes, yeah please. i have a thought and i know that that uh Amarendra Prabhu has some beautiful comments about this too. Another point about separation is that the very word separation, the very word vipralamba indicates external separation but internal union. And Jiva Goswami describes this in Priti Sandarbha. He says vipralambo viprakshena lambaha praptir yasya satata that it means uh, lamba to attain something that is in a distance vipra and you're speaking about poison this poison uh, this union to this poison is separation this is the most fundamental principle of gaudiya vaishnavism what's the most fundamental principle book in our line is bhagavad gita how does that book begin it begins with the first chapter and what is that first chapter it's bishad yoga it's the yoga or the the union of this bishad a lamentation and bishad as you know has another meaning it's a compound word bish and ad that when i accept the ad the bish the poison then there's some and i'm lamenting i accept that this position that i have this very fallen position and i cry in separation from the lord the first chapter of bhagavad gita arjuna is speaking about about suicide I, I once gave a talk. We called it "Separ uh, Suicide" in the Bhagavad Gita. It became very controversial. <laughs> Some devotees got very upset about it. And I comment. I, I show Baladevid Yabushan says like this, and look what Arjun says at the end. He just puts down his weapons and says, "Okay, just let them kill me." In America, we call that suicide by cop. You know, sometimes someone they, they go to. A, I I actually have a, a Hare Krishna friend. who went to a police station he became very depressed he was a drug user and things he went to a police station and he put his hand in his pocket and he started approaching the police in a very menacing kind of way and they said take your hand out of your pocket and he wouldn't do it and they pulled their guns out and pointed said take your hand out of your pocket and he wouldn't do it and the police shot and killed him that's how he died and they call it death by by cop so uh, similarly uh arjun was going to do death by cop in the same kind of way i'm going to put down my weapons better they just kill me that's the desire for suicide and that first chapter we'll hear about this in the gopis also that this desire for suicide this is a fundamental part of our of our uh, line and suicide is a very something we can talk about later i think but it's a very interesting thing that the idea that i can cease to exist or i can stop my my existence which of course we can't we understand as devotees but still that existential desire to stop existing and that's there that that desire a lot of philosophers throughout time have been very fascinated by that and we find a climax of that in alita madhav where radharani wants to commit suicide and separation from krishna or as my gurmaj would put it sometimes he said that chaitanya mahaprabhu's bhajan is a desire for death so that's that's bishad yoga there's yoga union through in, in, in an inconceivable kind of way through this this uh 
uh, suicide. So there's some some thoughts on this reflecting with Amarandu Prabhu. Fascinating. Suicide in the Bhagavad Gita. So we should. Right, sir. So when the gopis actually say that Krishna, they will come to that, that you are killing us. You know, that separation from you is killing us. They will speak that. How can you kill us? So it's a beautiful theme. So should we go to at least one verse before we finish today? We have about 30, 25, 30 minutes. Hmm? Can I add a point before yeah, please, we... Please, please go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. thinking how we generally try to uh, relate everything transcendental with our experiences in this world. Like, for example, a mother, when she listens to Krishna's baby pastimes, she immediately remembers her child eating dirt or probably scratching the calcium on the wall, or something like that, maybe stealing or speaking lies or something. So like Chaitanya Charan Prabhu was mentioning, looking at the fruit and remembering the reflection. Right. But I feel there's a very big difference between the feeling of separation in this world and the feeling of separation from Krishna. Because when we feel separation from someone in this world, it's painful because the person is far away and he can't reciprocate. He's gone. Let's say, let's say I have a death in my family and I, I, uh, I lose someone whom I really love. Now I'm crying and weeping in separation from that person, but that person is gone. That person doesn't know. And that person will never come to know. And he will never, he or she will never come to me and, and, and help me. But with Krishna, it's interesting. When we feel separation from him, he's sitting right here. So when there is separation from Krishna, the more we feel that ecstatic love of separation from him, he's sitting right here from whom we are feeling separation from. He can reciprocate from within and give us joy because Krishna is the source of all pleasure. In the Chandogya Upanishad, it's described to the right, to the left, to the top and bottom of Krishna, there's only Ananda. And Ananda Maya Abhyasat means Abhyasa, Abhyasat means repetition. So how is Krishna Ananda Swarup? Just by Abhyasat, which the scriptures have repeated it so many times. So just like that, that's how they say it. Krishna is Ananda Swarup. Well, what's the proof? Well, so many times it's being repeated, Abhyasat, just by repetition. So he who's the complete uh, epitome or let's say the source of all joy sitting in the heart. And when we feel separation, he can reciprocate from within. But in, in, the, in the context of this world, when we feel separation, that person can't reciprocate from inside. So it's, um, it's, um, it's like stuck in a forest fire. But it's interesting. Separation from Krishna is like a forest fire. But not to forget that Krishna in the heart is a rain cloud. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only the rain cloud which can put off the forest fire. Beautiful. There are two things here. It's a, I think this is a theme which will come again. There's one danger, if, especially in the Abrahamic traditions, they have the idea that God is so different from us that we can't even know about him. That to even depict him in any kind of imagery is a sacrilege, which is punishable which is forbidden by as one of the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. So one is to make God so much the other that he becomes inaccessible. And the other is to make God so much familiar, one of us, that he loses his transcendence. And then we have what we call, call, call sah Sahajiism. So in one sense, we could say that the capacity to love, the Potent, the potential to love and say, if there is selflessness in this world, and that is also in one sense laudable. So the quality of emotion, if somebody has a tendency to love and serve as contrasted with somebody who is very self-centered, then that is laudable. And a person who is naturally in Sattva Guna trying to do some service to someone else, some service for a higher cause, if they come to Bhakti, their love is naturally directed outward to something bigger than themselves. And then directing it toward the biggest reality is relatively easier for them. So we could say in terms of the development, so there is, when we will be discussing about Krishna and Gopi's love for each other, there is a similarity, between, it's not entirely dissimilar because the loving potential is the same within the soul. Whether it is directed toward a mundane or with somebody in this world or whether it is directed toward Krishna. So the, 
development of the loving potential there are principles which are similar but in terms of the capacity of the object to reciprocate there is radical dissimilarity so so that's so it's like if it's completely there is no not complete similarity but not complete dissimilarity also that's again we can say achinta bheda bhed so if we don't emphasize the bhed enough then we start taking krishna and uh, radha, radha krishna's past gopi krishna past tend to be entirely mundane but if we don't emphasize the abhed then nothing about that leela can be comp- uh, can be comprehended because the essential dynamics of love are similar and prabhupada talks about say in when he talks about how krishna teases rukmini so prabhupada in that sense in some ways he compares it if a, if a man comes back tired from his or work then he wants to have some fun he wants to have some teasing words some loving exchanges so and that may seem mundane but rather than seeing that that seeming mundane we can say that this is actually a, it's not as as below so above it's more like as above so below so that is the pure love and to some extent in the world it is reflected uh with varying degrees of uh, misdirection to what it is object what is directed towards mahadev you want to comment something <laughs> i'm just really happy to take part in this discussion <laughs> the bhagavatam 11330 says parasprana kathanam pavanam bhagavad yasa mito ratami tashtushtyanam evi nivita madatmana that when we speak about this gopi geet there should be some paraspara there should be some back and forth it's not just a lecture in the university or something but but hearing amarendra prabhu's wonderful quoting of verses and 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 sanskrit and understanding and in your deep understanding of thoughts of things it really turns so many things up and becomes relevant it, it's it's such a beautiful I, and i appreciate in general you chaitanya charan prabhu doing these these kind of programs where you're you're encouraging this churning to hear from different devotees and things and thank you for letting me be part of this yes so so is that an indication that we should conclude or should we do one jayati te di kam jayati jayati te di kam jayati te di kam yes definitely we'll go there jamana braja so jamana braja we should take birth and braj at least for the first verse what do you think i'm render yeah definitely. i was i was thinking proji maybe we can backtrack little uh, in the sense that um when the arrow is shot uh it's 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 important for the arrow to go ahead but then it's also important to pull it behind so that it gets the the momentum to the force to to go ahead so i was thinking if i could screen share and and um share something in in context of what we are discussing sure um i, I we, we were discussing about how transcendental this this whole section is about but at the same time um i i want to um share a poetic and intellectual analytical devotional humorous aspect of this past time so this is canto um 10 chapter 29 text 19 and this is shri bhagavan uvacha so krishna who is speaking in the bhagavad gita is the same krishna who is speaking here and he is speaking to the gopis just before the gopi geet is is um, is sung so we appreciate the gopis speaking and singing but i want to just backtrack to this where krishna is speaking and then we we can really uh, i think uh, smile together as to how wonderfully krishna can say something and at the same time not say that so he he says here that it's it's anushtup chanda so he says rajani esha ghora rupa ghor satva nishevita pratiyat vrajam neha sthayam stribhi sumadhyama so krishna is speaking to the gopis and um, there are gopis of all types as shila rupa goswami has explained there are gopis who are swapaksha of the camp of shrimati radharani and then there are those who are suhrit paksha they are not radharani's camp but they are friendly to radharani and then there are those who are tatastha paksha they are neither radharani's camp nor chandravali's camp but they are neutral and then then we have the vipaksha the opposite camp chandravali's camp so four camps talks about the swapaksha radharani's camp suhrit paksha friendly to radhika's camp the tatastha paksha they are neutral and then the vipaksha the the opposite camp chandravali's camp and all of them are there so krishna has to say something 
at the same time not say that. So it's very beautiful how Bhagavan speaks. He says, Rajani, which means night. Rajani Esha, this Esha means this. So the feminine usage is used here because Rajani is feminine. So Rajani Esha, this night, O gopis, Ghora Rupa. It is really horrifying and fearsome, right? Why? Ghora Sattva Nishevita. It's filled with wild animals. Ghora, you know, means wild. Hmm. Fearsome. So Rajani Esha, this night is certainly fearsome because fearsome and intense and horrifying animals are around at night. Therefore, O gopis, Pratiyata, please go back. Where? Vrajam. Go back to Vraja. Go back to the, don't be in the forest, go back to the village. And na iha stayam, don't stay here. Na iha, iha means here and na means no. Stayam means to stay as in English. Uh, stayam is like stayam. <laughs> so don't stayam. Don't stay here. Who? Stribihi. Oh, gopis. And sumadhyama. You're so beautiful, right? Sumadhyama is um, as translated, slender wasted. So this is a general meaning where Krishna is saying, oh, gopis, the night is very um, fearsome, filled with wild animals. Go back to the village and don't stay here. But that's to Chandravali's camp. Not to Srimati Radharani's camp. <laughs> to Radharani, he's saying the exact opposite. Because in Sanskrit, now if you see the Sanskrit here, Rajini Esha Aghora Rupa. You can break this Ghora Rupa by taking the A from here, the previous A. And it is Aghora. So Rajani Esha Aghora Rupa. The night tonight is not that fearsome. Why? Because the moon is up there and it's lit up. It's a full moon night. So it's not that fearsome. So the A uh from Esha, Esha ends with the A uh, and that goes with Ghora. So it negates the meaning. So Rajani Esha, night to night, a Ghora Rupa is certainly not fearsome. Why? Now the A uh from Rupa goes with the Ghora here. <laughs> because Aghora Sattva Niveshita, because tonight all the friendly animals are out, like the peacocks and the deer, the wild animals aren't there. Tonight is, uh, it's a very nice night. And therefore, now look what Krishna is saying. Now he's saying, Pratiyata Vrajam Na. Pratiyata Vrajam Na. Don't go back to Vraja. And instead, Iha Stayam, stay here. <laughs> stay here, Strivihi O Gopis. But then he's mentioning who should stay there. Su Madhyamaha. Now, Madhyama could mean the middle part of the body, or it could mean the middle part of the bhav. On one side, you have uh, those who are. Um, the 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 mrudu snehika those who are uh, very soft and tender and on the other side you have the pragalba naika those who are very intense right you have the mukda naika on one end who are very sober and humble on the other hand you have those who are pragalba naika like lalita sakhi intense like they will throw not frying pans but like a, 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 you know a flower garland or something so on one hand you have the mukda naika and on the other hand, you have the Pragalba Naika, again from Chaitanya Charitamrit. But in the middle, we have the Madhya Naika, which is Radharani's camp. And in that, Su is Radharani, the best. So everyone go home. Srimati Radharani, you stay here <laughs> because you are Madhyama. You are not Mukda Naika, you're not Pragalba Naika, you're Madhya Naika. And in that Sushtu, you are the best. So Rajani Esha Aghora Rupa. Tonight is the most uh, sweet night. Because Aghora Sattva Niveshita, uh, and, uh, all the friendly animals are out. Pratiyata Vrajam Na. Therefore, don't go back to the village. Ihasteyam. Please stay here. Stri Bihi, O Gopis. And especially Sumadhima. Srimati Radhika. Srimati Radharani. So it's, it's so beautiful that when we talk about Krishna being transcendental and Krishna being great, yes. But at the same time, look how he's mixing poetry, rasa, emotions, all of that in the middle of the night, in the middle of the forest, saying the same thing, but being caught differently by different camps. So I think uh, before, uh, I was just thinking before we get into the Gopi Geet, which is also having double meanings, you know, transcendental double meaning, mm -hmm. it has from both camps, uh, but that's from the Gopi side.
but this is from Bhagavan Shri Krishna's side. I'm I'm sorry, I you know I was mumbling and rumbling and rambling too much, but <laughs> please forgive me. It's brilliant. So, <laughs> yes. so you wanted to say something, bro? Or you know, no, I'm it? I'm just so happy here. Well, thank you very much, Amarendra. Prabhu. It was a beautiful explanation. Yeah. So this is a. So basically, if we consider, I mean, this, since you brought this verse, it's good that we got the context. The Gopi Gita, how does it happen is that Krishna plays the flute, the gopis leave everything, and they come to Krishna, they come to be with Krishna. And then Krishna dallies with them, in the Krishna, he in one sense has a little fun with them. He says, okay, you know, it's use three reasons basically. It is night, uh, and it's dangerous for you all to be out here. And then he says that, okay, you know, it is improper for women to be alone at night. And third, he also is misdirects. He says, okay, maybe you are curious because you wanted to see the beauty of Randavan's forest. So now you saw it, you go back. So the real reason he keeps diverting. So in one sense, if you see here, the gopi's love is also seen. The, the Yagik Brahman Pati is in chapter 23. They also leave everything and come to Krishna. And Krishna tells them to go back and they go back. Whereas Krishna tells the gopis to go back, but they don't go back. They don't, they don't directly oppose, but they start uh, moving their toes along the ground, making marks on the ground, indicating their reluctance. And then, this, then Krishna sees their intense desire and they start dancing together. And then suddenly, now we can go into that later about the pride, how it happens in the gopis, but they become proud and Krishna disappears from them, taking only one gopi. And then Krishna disappears even from that gopi. And all the gopis meet with each other because they're searching for Krishna. And then while searching, searching, they keep searching. They can't find Krishna at all. They go deep into the forest. I think Ananda Hanjipu says that they go so deep in that they, it's so dark, they can't even see their hand in front of them. Then they think we can't find Krishna over here. So then they all come back. They come back to the banks of the Yamuna and there they start calling out to Krishna. So it's not by searching we will find Krishna, but it's more by calling out. It is not by our efforts, but it is by his mercy he will come. So we will call out to him. And at that stage, when they're completely broken uh, on the verge of death, as we will talk about, in the, that they are calling out and they are. In one sense, every verse is actually, a, it, it is different frames of analysis, but every verse we could say it concludes with Krishna, please come back. So each verse is from a different framework, please come back, please come back. Anything you, more you want to add to the context of the specific Gopi Gita before we go in? Okay, so let's look at the first verse. So, Madhandru, you would like to explain? I, I, would, I would like to hear uh, Amarendra Prabhu. It's my voice. I, I really love how he, how he recites verses. It's so okay, much please. Better. Go ahead. Mahendra Prabhu. Um, would, you, uh, would you instruct me to sing it, Prabhuji? Sure, please. Yeah, please. Please, please according please. to your, whatever tune you like the most. <laughs> I know there's a number of different tunes. Okay, Prabhuji. Gopya Chuhu. Jayate te dhikam Janmana vrajaha Shrayata in dera Shashwadatra he Daita Dreshetam Dekshutavakas Tvai Drita Savas Tvam Vichinvate Now I would like to hear from you, Shri Padmada Vananda Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, there's, the first thought that comes to me in this verse 
that the gopis they're saying jayitam te dikam janmana braja that my dear krishna we're, we're approaching you we're, we're the first thing we're saying about you jayita you're very glorious why because adikam so much your, your janmana your birth is such a glorious birth because you've taken birth here in braj and indirectly that indicates radharani because jiva goswami explains in mukta charit that radha is really the queen of braj and our acharyas have said that the only reason why Krishna stays in Braj is because of Radharani. So the gopis, I, I consider this as the very first thing. They're saying, Jai te te dikam janmana braja. That my dear Krishna, we, we appreciate you. <laughs> You're all glorious because of your connection with Srimati Radharani. And, and, and as uh, Amarendra Prabhu was commenting, there's so many different double meanings and sometimes more than that, and, and the way the gopis, they speak. And that gives great pleasure to Krishna. So I just wanted to comment that, that first line. So they are saying that this land is fortunate because Radharani is here. And Indira is Radharani. Is that what yeah, Indira, and, and, and Braj is, is fortunate. Braj is so glorious because it's a place of Radha. Oh, it's Radharani's okay. forest. And therefore, Krishna, you're glorious. Because you, you've been able to take birth here <laughs> in this place. You're so fortunate. You have some connection with Radharani. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> okay. Mm, that's beautiful. So, the way I, I thought of this verse is, Amarindra Prabhu, you want to first go ahead? You can explain, then we'll go ahead. Oh, I would like to hear from you, Prabhuji. Please go ahead. So, I have tried to you know, read all the verses to conclude in that call. Please come back, Krishna. So generally, see, when we are conveying our emotions, our emotions are quite subjective. So what, what I am feeling when I try to put it in words, the other person may not be feeling at all like that. So if I give the context, you know, why am I feeling like this? Mm. I'm angry. You know, what is there to get angry about? But I tell the situ how I am seeing the situation, from what frame I am perceiving this. Then... My anger, okay, that's okay. That's how you saw this thing. That's why you're getting angry. So the gopis here are creating a frame. They're saying that Krishna, you, you, you are the person who made this land fortunate. That and you made you are you made this land of Raja so fortunate that it, it was all fortunate, but you made it all the more fortunate because so fortunate, in fact, that even the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi, wants to come and reside over here. So we have a Bil near Bilba one, Lakshmi performs austerities. And she wants to not only stay here, but permanently stay here. She doesn't stay like that. So this land is so fortunate. And it, you are the person who made this land so fortunate. Then why are you making us so unfortunate? Why are you making us so unfortunate that you have gone away from us? <coughs> and then in one sense, the second, so that's second part of the verse is, that, you know, we, in one sense, they are saying, we don't deserve to be unfortunate like this. Because, Daita, we love you. Drishyatam, we are seeking you. We are looking for you. And Dikshutavakas, Dikshutam Dikshutavakas, and Tvai Dhruta Asavas, that we are our life is devoted to you. So, in one sense, they are saying that, uh, if you see these characteristics, this Daita, Drishyatam, Dikshutavakas, in some ways, they are similar to Machitta, Madgata, Prana, Bodhanta, Parasparam. They are saying, our, our, we are thinking about you, our lives are devoted to you. And let, we see the gopis have been discussing about Krishna also with each other. So basically, we are devoted to you. So you have made this land fortunate. How can you make us unfortunate by abandoning us like this? So please, please, Krishna, come back. Mm. So that's, that's my thought. Madhavan, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to add a little thing. that This verse reminds me of the Jagannath Ashtakam. We've been meditating a lot in Jagannath Ashtakam. And the first verse of Jagannath Ashtakam describes Kadachit Kalindi Tata. Mm -hmm. That sometimes Kalindi Tata on the bank of, of the Jamuna. Actually, the first three verses of Jagannath Ashtakam speak about the place. And that, that there's some significance to that. Just like in the Gita, it also begins, the very first verse describes Dharma Ketri Kuru that at this place. There's some foundational principle there. So the gopis, would be, first thing they're saying 
they're speaking about brudge. And this, so we can understand that this whole topic is hinged upon this place, this, this brudge. This is Jagannath Ashtakam begins the first two verses speaking about brudge. And then the first verse, uh, sp third verse speaking about uh, uh, on the bank of the ocean. Uh, and how so kadachit, sometimes it's like brudge, sometimes this place is, is like on the bank of the ocean. It's not brudge, but it is brudge. That's Jagannath Ashtakam. The gopis are starting in a similar way, Jaitite become Janmana Braja. That the first thing is, Krishna, that you're born here in Braj, and because of that, you're very, very glorious. Amazing. Yes, thank you, Madhandru. That's a beautiful correlation. Yes, Madhandru, would you like to speak something? Sure, Roji. <laughs> Actually, um, Srila Sanatan Goswami, in his Brihad Vaishnav Toshini, he has said that Krishna ka gamyo vaga artho yasam lekhi tu mishyate nyatva aparadam devyas tam bhaktim tanvantu me nijam. Srila Sanatan Goswami has said that only Krishna eka gamya vak artha. Only Krishna understands the meanings of the Gopi Gita. <laughs> he says, Krishna eka gamya vag artha. The vak artha, the words coming from the lips of the gopis, gamya, only Krishna understands. Yasyam lekhitum ishyate, but however, Sanatan Goswami is saying, I am attempting to write, although I don't know. So what is happening? Aparad. He's saying, nyatva aparadam devyatam bhaktim tanvantu me nijam. That I'm committing the offense of trying to write something that I don't understand. However, oh gopis, I understand that uh, you are very merciful. So just for the fact that I'm attempting, why don't you forgive me and instead give me your own devotion to Krishna? <laughs> and Srila Jiva Goswami has also commented in this section. He says that when the babies talk, they don't mean anything, but it gives supreme joy to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> so Srila Jiva Goswami says, my commentary to the Gopi Gita are like baby talk. It doesn't make any sense because I don't understand anything. But I'm pretty sure it's going to give a lot of joy to the gopis. <laughs> so if that's the take of uh, personalities like Srila um, Sanatan Goswami and, and, and Srila Jiva Goswami. So I feel um, utterly unqualified to even, even comment. But I will, I will like to say a few things. Um, can, can we screen share, Prabhuji? Yes, can, you, sure. can you keep the screen share on? Then we can... Um, um, we can see how Krishna is poetic, mm. but the gopis are no less. <laughs> Krishna, the gopis <laughs> are no less. It's interesting that uh, uh, different verses in the Bhagavatam are composed in different meters, in different chandas. There are some which are like really long, the Shardula Vikridita Chanda, like Cheto Dairupanamar Janam Bhava Maha. Or you could have something like Anushtup Chanda, like the verses of Bhagavad Gita. Or you could have an Indra Vajra Chanda, which goes ra, 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 hmm? something like that. Or you could have the Vasanta Tilaka Chanda, like the Brahma Samhita. So now the question is, what Chanda is the Gopi Geet bound in? It's very interesting that it's bound in a Chanda called Indira Chanda. So the Gopis, as they start the Gopi Geet, they very, although they are in the pangs of their separation, when there is devotion, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janaita Asuvairagyam Jnanam Yacha Ahitukam. With every explosion of devotional sentiments, there is transcendental knowledge hidden there. Mm. So the gopis are in the first verse through the word Indira, hiding the name of the Chanda that in which they are going to sing the whole Gopi Geet, Indira Chanda. And at the same time, it's almost like telling Krishna, if you can be poetically um, you know, an erudite um, orator, we are no less. Look at our poetry. Well, we start off with the first syllable, right? Ja. Jayati te dhikam. Then we pause. Then after the pause, what's the first syllable? Janmana vraja. So the first syllable before the pause and the first syllable after the pause is the same. Ja. And in the second line, they start with sh. Shrayata is sh and r together. So Shrayata Indira, pause. Shashwadadrahi, it's the same syllable again, sh. And then in the third line, Daita Drishyatam, da is the first syllable, pause. Dikshuta Vaka, it's again the d. <laughs> and in the last line, 
So every first and seventh syllable in the Indira Chanda, they have kept it same systematically. Although they are crying, look at the genius in their crying, behind their crying. And then when we think that this is all that the gopis have, well, it's poetic, but uh, yeah, is that all? Then the gopis say, no, we still have some more nectar left. Then they say that <laughs> we have also aligned... <laughs> <laughs> we also have aligned the second syllable of each line as the same. Ja ya ti te dhikam shra ya ta indira. So it's ya. Beautiful. <laughs> Third line, da yi ta drishyatam. Again, it's a y. F- fourth line, twa yi drita savas. <laughs> and all of this has been given. Uh, by uh, by a commentator called as Hemadri, who has commented to Vopadev. Uh, Vopadev has been a commentator on the Bhagavatam, and there's someone, there's a commentator called Hemadri who has commented on the commentary of Vopadev. And he seems to be the first person picking out these jewels. And then, of course, Srila Vishwana Chakravarti and Jeeva Goswami, others, they bring this tradition down of the genius behind the Gopi Geet. So behind the emotions... There's also so much analytical, intellectual, poetic juice. Just mm-hmm. keeping, even if you keep the devotion aside and study this uh, from a poetic perspective, it's amazing for a poet to not practice beforehand and come and compose on the spot and also pronounce the name of the chanda in which you're going to sing and keep the <laughs> first and the seventh syllable the same throughout and keep the second syllable same in every line. Now that's uh, some level of uh, poetic genius. So uh, I, I wanted to pause at that. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, it's the, the, there's a, it's this, I, I knew about the first and seven, but second is striking. It's like, it's almost there, but we, I never saw it. Beautiful. Um, Gopya Uchu, it seems that uh, here they use the word plural. So I think Jiva Goswami Gopal Champo mentions that uh, actually each verse of the Gopi Geet is offered by one one Gopi. And when they are offering it, it she, that Gopi is expressing her own heart while at the same time representing the group. So it's both individual and collective. That's why it's a, it's a plural. So it's one, go, one Gopi making each verse. And there is a continuity in the, in the verses but at the same time, there's a distinctive thought in each verse. So <clears throat> it's in, again, no gopi is actually clearly mentioned explicitly in the Ras Leela. Radharani is hinted at. So it, it, it's, it seems it's more of a, the whole mood is of the reciprocation of love. So the gopis are on one side and Krishna is on one side. Of course, each gopi has her individual emotion, but the mood here is of that reciprocation of love between the gopis and Krishna. So it, this also you could say indicates like a unity in diversity. All the gopis are united in beseeching Krishna but at the same time each gopi has an individual relationship with Krishna and each gopi is calling out to Krishna individually. So that's gopya Madhan Madhantru, you want to add? Yeah, I was just appreciating that that's a brilliant comment it's just like I, I, I've heard an example given of grass. If you look at grass, it, it's a whole. You, you see the, the, someone's lawn and it looks very beautiful altogether. But each, you look closer, each blade of grass is individual. And this is our bhajan. We're, we're coming together and we're doing kirtan and it's a whole group. You know, did you see those Hare Krishna people chanting and dancing on the street today? It's a group. But at the same time, we have to be individuals. And it's such an important lesson that we learn I, I think it's, it's uh, to speak in kind of a social context, it's a, a problem that a lot of devotees have and we join. We're not strong enough as individuals and we just want to have our identity w- with the society, w- with the whole kirtan. And that's okay, but it actually makes things weaker. Sometimes even it gets so bad where people, they feel threatened if someone's an individual. But when we become individuals, as you're pointing out, unity and diversity, the whole, the whole becomes stronger by strong individuals. And so this is a very powerful lesson we're getting from the Gopi Gita. Yeah. 
Yes, <laughs> grass is a very beautiful example. So, like people, I feel like those Hare Krishnas. In fact, I was reading a book on the design. Uh, it is a design argument on the existence of God, and there that person he says that uh, every flake of snow, every blade of grass, and every Hare Krishna devotee is an individual. <laughs> so their perception is you all look alike, but they are individuals. So he's giving that example there. But yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Mm. Oh. One point. One point. I just wanted to. Amarendra, you or Madam, you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I was, um, I was reflecting on this, um, on this discussion and the situation of the gopis in the in the first verse. Um, there's actually a very nice saying in Sanskrit: "Nishevya saditam patihu tata pakshi ganashchiram yat pibanti sarastoyam saiva lajja mahodade." It means that. Um, um let's say there are uh, there are groups of birds sitting on the on the shore of an ocean groups of birds sitting on the shore of an ocean for a long long time and they are dying out of thirst they can't drink the ocean water because it's salty and they end up dying out of thirst it's certainly shame on the ocean that birds are sitting on your shore and you can't even save them from thirst so it's almost like that that krishna is an ocean of mercy he's an ocean of joy and here are gopis who are like birds sitting on the shore of the ocean of joy and dying out of thirst of separation so therefore the gopis are saying here that we want you to come back come out why because we want to save your reputation otherwise people will say <laughs> <laughs> people will say the gopis are like birds on the ocean shore of the ocean called krishna who's joy personified and here are gopis dying in separation so krishna just to save your reputation we want you to come back that you can actually being the ocean of sweet water you can feed us the, the water and save us from the thirst of death also we see in the bhagavatam when um when uh, krishna krishna mahayogin when when the the friends of krishna he uh, rama amogha vikrama when during the forest fire fast time krishna's friends krishna balram's friends they call out to krishna and balram please protect us please protect us so question could be asked that um, are the friends of krishna selfish to use krishna's protection to save their life no actually their point is if we die in this forest fire tomorrow morning you will have nobody to play with krishna you like to play with friends we know so if we die in the forest fire with us dies your friendship so therefore please protect us so that we stay alive and when we stay alive your friendship with us stays alive and you get another day to play with us hopefully so even in the calling of the friends to protect their life Uh, they are thinking about Krishna's play the next day. So, what to speak of the gopis? What to speak of the gopis? The gopis are saying the greatest uh, suffering here is not moving, wandering from one forest to another in the middle of the night as gopis, is not being able to see you, and we are able to relate to your pain of not being able to see us. This we we are concerned about your. so it's it's almost like saying it's easier to be dasharath and die in separation from ram than to live all one's life as nanda maharaj tolerating that separation so krishna we may as well die in the separation but if we die what will happen to you as gopinath so we will continue to live for your pleasure so if you want <laughs> we are thinking about you and if you want to reciprocate just come just 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 come out don't don't hide this is not the time to hide mm-hmm. and uh, so it's it's interesting that's the greatest dukkha in the heart of the gopis at this point where imagine if we are in a place where everybody is crying and weeping and we also end up crying and weeping then it's not so much of a suffering because we have like minded people crying with us but imagine if we are in a place where everyone's happy because of one person krishna and in that same place we are crying in miserable pain because of that one person krishna 
<laughs> then that's a very bad predicament to be in. Very bad predicament to be in. So the gopis are saying that here, Vrajaha Tava Janmana, by your appearance, O Krishna, Vrajaha Adikam Jayati. Vraja has become more glorious than before. Why? Shrayata Indira. Indira could refer to Lakshmi Devi, as Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu uh, pointed out, refers to Radharani. Indira can also refer to wealth, because we see when Krishna appeared, there was a surplus amount of butter and yogurt and ghee and milk products. So that's, that's the business for, for the Vaishyas, for the, the, the Gopa Vamsha. So that's wealth. Krishna, by your appearance, wealth has increased. But not just external wealth, internal wealth. Indira also refers to satisfaction of the heart. So Shrayata Indira Shashwadatrahi, it seems Lakshmi has just settled down here in Vrindavan because everyone's so happy. But in that same place where everyone's so happy because of you, we are crying miserable because of you. Come out. <laughs> you can't do this. Some thoughts. <laughs> mm. Magnificent. Madam? Yeah, it also strikes me that the first word, Gopi Uchu, and we know Gopi comes from the same beach datu as Gupta, or hidden. Gopi literally means someone who hides something. So this is the very private feelings of the gopis. And, and I really appreciate Amarandrapur. Thank you so much. Such a beautiful description you just gave. How this is such a private feeling from the heart of the gopis. And Krishna, he, he says, Napadi aham nirvadyasam yujam. I have to repay because I promise yegatam mam prapadyante tam sutaiva bhajamyam. I've made this solemn promise. I'll always reciprocate, but I don't know how to reciprocate with the gopis. So to reciprocate with the gopis, he also has to have something private. And therefore, to go back to our, our Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem, there's two class, two prominent classrooms, especially for Gaudiya devotees here. One is the Jagannath Mandir, which represents organized religion. It's mass, mass program of so many people. And the other is a private program in the Gambira for Krishna to repay that debt to the gopis. Piece. He has to become very reflective. He has to, to go in isolation and, and with very intimate association and, and dive deep in it. Otherwise, it's not possible. Beautiful. Thank you, bro. Regarding this point about the gopis being separated from Krishna and living on for Krishna's sake only, I think in Chaitanya Charitam there's a verse where Radharani is praying that. Krishna, when you left, my plight became like that of an animal who's been put in a cage and the cage is set on fire. Hmm? Uh, the animal might at least try to escape from that cage. She said, so like that, I could have left my body, but your words that I will come back, Manish. they are like the latch on the cage. So I'm burning, but I can't escape from this cage. This body is burning in separation from you. But if you come back and you see that you, we are not here uh, to be with you, to serve you, then you will be unhappy. And thinking of your unhappiness and not wanting that unhappiness on you, we, I am living on. So the gopis existence and they're ex accepting one suffering for the sake of Krishna. It's extraordinary. It's interesting how even Chaitanya Charitamrita and um... Other texts also speak about um, Krishna heart to heart talking with the gopis about um, the nature of divine love. So it's almost Krishna saying that all of you are expressing your love, but there is no love in this world. There is no love in this world. And if there is love, there should not be separation. And if there is separation, the person must die. <laughs> Point number one. There is no love in this world. And if there is, because love is eternal, mm. the, the relation should be eternal and there should be no separation. And if there is separation in true love, then the person must die. Oh, gopis, you still haven't died. Tell me, what's the reason? So there is, there is true love and there is separation. Okay. So th there must be death. But then why are you alive? So the example... Uh, 
given again very much similar to what uh, his grace chaitanya charan prabhu gave the example is like that of a bird the gopis are mentioning that our life air is like a, our pran is like a pakshi pran pakshi our our life is like a bird and it's caught in a cage which is set on fire and the fire is that of separation so what we want to do is we want to escape right but however outside the cage there is a eagle sitting and that is death so we have an option of either burning in the fire or escaping the fire and being eaten up by the eagle so if you're krishna if you're asking <laughs> krishna if you're asking why we are not dying there is true love and there is separation and then why we are not dying so it's because the eagle represents death and the eagle is not coming through to eat us because there is the layer of the fire of separation so the fire of separation from you krishna is the reason which is burning us and at the same time is stopping the eagle of death from coming and taking us eating us so therefore the the fire of uh, the separation mood is not letting us live and it's not letting us die the fire is burning us and at the same time it's not letting the eagle eat <laughs> the bird of our life the eagle of death eating the bird of our life so this is the reason why we are not dying because the eagle representing death fears the fire of separation and is not able to come and devour us so we are happy to be burning like this uh, neither living nor dying <laughs> <laughs> this is started like the 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 poetic beauty of the imagery you know it's just so amazing yeah you know, we could go on for a long time but i think it's late for you also we will continue madhavan through you want to add something yeah, i i have i have one sh- short yes. comment about the, this poetic beauty the source of all the arts is the ras leela if we contemplate oh. on it and that begins with rag rag means attraction krishna's playing a rag on his flute and the gopis become attracted and then they have rag uh tall in uh let me turn you think obav rag and tall so the actually the beginning is is bav is a feeling krishna has this feeling in his heart and he's calling out for the gopis with, with the rag and then the tall comes in the form of the gopis footsteps and they're running to that ras leela and then they start and in that ras leela you have all the different arts you have cooking you have you have makeup you have outfits you have backdrops you have you know paintings on the walls you, ha- you have drama at the end that's the culmination of all the different rasli that when krishna leaves and the gopis they begin acting out krishna's pastimes so if people really have some attraction if people have some attraction for the arts we should learn something about the raslila and it's a wonderful way to present it that all the different arts are coming from Rusley and one of the one of the very important one is poetry. Mm. And we're very fortunate to have Amar Render for who can he can help us to to relish that. I I really appreciate it. I am yeah. I am whatever I'm speaking Prabhuji is like um, is like the sound of an instrument but both of you are the the musicians like Ramananda Rai says in the in the conversation with Mahaprabhu mm-hmm. that uh, <laughs> Mahaprabhu um i am i may look like an instrument and the sound may come appear to come from my mouth but actually oh mahaprabhu you are the musician um the instrument sounds only as good as the musician is so if something uh, auspicious and favorable is coming from my mouth it's only because of the association of both of you the moon does not have a light of its own but it's only happy to reflect the light of the sun so for me i am happy that the moon has one sun but i have two <laughs> in the dark sky of my ignorance i'm not a moon but i'm just giving an example both of you are suns thank uh, you prabhu so it's it's such a blessing to be able to have a sangha like this paraspara when there's some back and forth because sometimes even amongst devotees as someone who speaks a lot i think i know both of you speak more than myself i think you can appreciate this i think too that sometimes a tendency is to start thinking of myself as a speaker and we're not speakers we're servants and as servants it's best done when it's paraspara when there's some back and forth with other devotees and then we're understanding I, I, we're just glorifying krishna 
just just as, as we're doing the Artik and we don't make things up, we don't decide, oh, I'm going to offer some Levi's jeans to Krishna today, or I'm going to offer, you know, some, some nonsense thing, but I'm offering what's been given to me by my Gurudev, the incense, the lamp, those certain articles. And so in a discussion where we're just repeating what we've heard from our Guru Janas and going back and forth from it, then we can understand it in a much deeper way. And I'm really happy. And Amarindra Prabhu, you're, you're such a nice example and you're being so humble and respectful and addressing us in respectful ways. And, and there's some sweetness and beauty in that. I, I appreciate that. But it reminds me your position is something like Shukadev Goswami sitting amongst these old guys. <laughs> they may be much, much older <laughs> and senior in some perspective, but they've all gathered to hear Shukadev Goswami. And I, I really appreciate very much. You're our hope for the future. I'm, I, I feel um, one time actually in our backyard here, um, the neighbor's dog came in, in the backyard. And then I was asking uh, the devotees that, whose dog is this? And just by looking at the dog, they said, oh, that's, you know, that's John's dog, the neighbor. And that's his dog. Just by looking at the dog. So I was thinking not every street dog uh, in India has the fortune of being associated to the master. So if uh, by um, looking at me, if my uh, Guru Dev, my Guru Maharaj is uh, remembered, then I think this pet dog's uh, existence is successful. I am like the pet dog in the backyard of the Zoom room. And uh, if my superiors can uh, see uh, the, the, the dog collar belt associated with the master, then I think I'm happy. I'm happy to be a pet dog. So I'm, I'm just grateful to be here. And um, I also want to take the opportunity to offer my obeisances and apologize because sometimes um, because of my, um, I would say arrogant nature, I may sometimes over speak. Um, and sometimes even because of a passionate racing mind, I may um, not be a good listener. So I want to apologize to both of you that uh, if I've, if I've um, committed any mistake, I've, crossed over etiquette or spoken more than needed um please forgive me i will i will try to fix myself but if, if you speak like that then it hurts our hearts and it makes us feel like like you, you're trying to tell us that that our mood is that that all this mariada all this etiquette is the most important thing <laughs> but we're not thinking like that don't don't underestimate yeah, Chaitanya speak, Charm we'll speak, we'll speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah. I'm I'm really so happy to be here because um, to be with uh, superiors and like-minded Sajatiya Ashaye Snigdhe Sadhu Sangha Swato Vare Rupa Goswami has given definitions <laughs> of Sadhu Sangha. He said Sajatiya, it must be like-minded. Ashaya, the person must have uh, Snigdha, affection from the heart. And uh, Swatovare, they must be superior to us. And in this assembly, I'm getting all three. <laughs> I'm getting like-minded association. I'm getting affectionate superiors. And at the same time, those who are experienced. So this is Sadhu Sangha. And Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoi. Krishna Bhakti Janma Mula Hoi Sadhu Sangha. I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your humility. But at the same time, here we are focusing on reciprocity. So. In future, I would, I mean, it would be nice if you just have a free flow discussion. You know, I think seniority, juniority, it matters to some extent. But ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> beyond that, it's we want to reciprocate, uh, reciprocate with each other and we want to share. So I think we focus on sharing and savoring over here rather than on who is senior, who is junior. And so it's, you know, your contributions have been wonderful. It's the first time you're here in the Monks podcast. And you know, it's wonderful. So Madhantru, without you, I don't think we would have dared to take up this topic. We're discussing various topics and you, know, you bring the bring a maturity and devotional depth to this whole discussion as well as just to the to this forum itself, not just the content, but itself just being here. So and I, I think Chaitanya and, Charan Prabhu and myself, we are like travelers and we are hungry and thirsty to eat a mango of Gopi Geet, but 
Shripad Madhavanand Prabhu is the wish fulfilling tree under whose shade we can sit and <laughs> accept that that <laughs> fruit of Gopi Geet mm. because the tree is protecting us from rain and the rain could be so many things protecting us from the sunlight and at the same time giving us the shade and the comfort and the fruit the the fruit comes from the tree so i think chaitanya charan prabhu and myself we are very very fortunate shripad madhavanand prabhu thank you for introducing us to the uh, the jagannath puri institute of braj prem <laughs> <laughs> university of the puri university of braj prem i believe what is, what is it when you say tree and the shade i immediately think of a place here in jagannath puri and you already you already know what i'm thinking of and that's suitable yeah and that's the tree which is the mahaprasad toothbrush of jagannath which is planted by the hand of chaitanya mahaprabhu and under which uh, haridas thakur took shelter from the sun from the beating rays of the sun took shelter in the shade and did his nam japa and under that tree, Rupa Goswami began to compose Alita Madhav and Vidagda Madhav. And we think about Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Harinam Chintamani. And in the first chapter of that Harinam Chintamani, he gives a beautiful purport to Jagannath Puri and to Gora Leela, which I think is appropriate to offer right now. And that is that the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he's a supreme personality of Godhead, he's, he hears from his devotees. And he heard Mukti Tattva, and the mouth of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He heard uh, Rasa Tattva from the mouth of Rupa Goswami. He heard Nam Tattva from the mouth of, of Haridas Thakur. He heard Sadhya Sadhana Tattva from the mouth of Ramananda Roy. And he's teaching us here in this Dham. He, he brought all the devotees, Nityananda, Dwaita, Mukunda, all these senior devotees. He brought them all together, said, come, come, I want to show you someone. And they went to Siddhabakul. And he said, here's this young boy, and I want all of you to bless him. He's the most qualified person. And that was Rupa Goswami. And that's the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's our line. We don't look at someone's age, but we look at someone's qualification. And I, I want to cry because I'm not qualified at all to speak on these things. I, I, I'm an old fossil. I have some use for that maybe. But I, I want to get association of a younger, more wonderful devotees like yourself and hear from you. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is God himself and he can hear <laughs> from these persons, then surely I can also hear from Amarindra and Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's, you are not an old fossil, you are an old treasure. You know, it's deep, deep. The older the treasure becomes, the more valuable it becomes. Thank you. That's beautiful. So usually I try to summarize at the end. I'm not sure. I can summarize <laughs> today because it is. <laughs> Krishna, mother, you want to speak something? Yeah, Krishna Kum would like to say please. something. Please. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Speak loudly. My humble pranams and very deep gratitude for this session today. Thank you to all three of you. <laughs> really, thank you to all three of you and to Agu Janaz and to Shia Prabhupada. Actually, just you were talking about this tree and fruit. And just yesterday, I read this bhajan from Kalyana Kalpataru, and I thought it was just appropriate to mention, where Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks about how if we don't do proper sadhana, then all we can do is shake the tree, and all the fruit that falls down is the bad fruit. Okay. But if all of you have done the, the nice sadhana that you have been doing for so many years, then you will get this kind of discussion. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. It's so nice that we went from Radha Kun to Shyam Kun or Krishna Kun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji, for that comment. We all can hope to improve. At least I can. I need to improve my sadhana a lot. But in one sense, for me, the association of devotees like you is itself a part of my something that inspires me to do my sadhana. And till now on the Monk's podcast, we discussed many topics. I told Amarindra Prabhu, one of his contributions to our movement is that he is really helping devotees get higher taste in relishing Shastra, relishing Shlokas. So when we were planning to have Monk's podcast, he, rather than discussing some contemporary issues, why not we discuss about relishing Shastra itself? Then we thought of what we could relish and then Gopigit topic came up and we thought that you can also be there. So I think you have given a new flavor to the Monk's podcast also today. 
So I'll see if I can bring my summary flavor to this new flavor. <laughs> It may be a little tough. Mm, but basically, we discussed today on uh, what are the in what mood should we discuss the Ras Lila? So, or the Gopi Gita specifically. So the so we started by we are singing the Gopi Gita, so it's good to know the meaning. And then when we talk about our particular tradition. if we don't give the explanation others are going to anyway comment on it and they will propagate misconceptions and people in general get misconceptions so in one sense it's our responsibility to understand properly and explain it properly because this is our legacy and especially because we are gaudiya vaishnava and radharani's love for krishna is the distinctive contribution of our tradition so if we are going to talk about varnashram dharma and karma yoga and other things that's one it's required but and how are we different from sri vaishnavas or other traditions so this is our distinct contribution and then also although we may say it's confidential at one level it is not because radha krishna deities are right there on the altar in many places we have also the lalita vishaka and in mayapur we have the ashtasakhis so their position the nature of their relationship when people ask questions if we can't give answers then we are failing in our service to defend and explain and glorify our sampradaya so if we had went to glorify but we can't even defend then that's not that's that's we are failing and then we talked about when prabhupad is telling us be cautious but we talked prabhupad said don't we don't want prabhupad don't get the impression that they are mundane they're ordinary girls but prabhupad says we can't buy, boycott them and we should discuss love in separation and then you also mentioned madan prabhu that we may take one statement of prabhupad and uh, isolate it decontextualize it but if you look at the bigger picture prabhupad has given jay radha madhav which is considered a esoteric song that was news for me in the gaudiya mat and tulsi and tulsi aarti is filled with manjuri bhav which is also is esoteric and it is used the word outlawed in the gaudiya mat so prabhupad has not hidden the tradition in you know, not deprived us of the tradition and we can so we discuss this topic in a mood of as uh, pratap rudra sang the gopi git for the pleasure of lord chaitanya similarly we we glorify we sing we recite the gopi git and, and glorify understand it in the mood for the pleasure of lord chaitanya just as we chant the holy names also they you talk about how it, there's a non difference between in some ways between the kirtan of the holy names and the gopi gita so the verse from the next chapter where the gopis are calling out to krishna they are crying So there's this beautiful comparison between the darkness of uh, darkness of the night of Vrindavan and the darkness of Kaliyuga. Just as so the gopis are calling out Krishna's name, similarly we are calling out the holy names. And Prabhupada essentially paraphrases the Gopi Gita also as the holy names. So both are glorifications of Krishna, and we need all we. So in that sense, we are simply glorifying Krishna, whichever we, whichever what whether it is Gopi Gita or chanting the holy names. There's a non-difference between the two. now if we understand it properly the bhagavatam it promises that we will become free from lust so for that we need to hear faithfully and and anushnuyata under guidance so whatever we have heard from the previous acharyas and whatever we have realized we try to share today in that mood and discussed various metaphors to understand so the two with respect to appreciating the gopi gita one is one obstacle is thinking that 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 love is mundane and the second is to think that it is uh, that this love in separation is agony so for the mundane we discussed um, i i talk about the metaphor of say reflection and reality the love of krishna and gopis is the real mango and the more we understand the real mango the more we become attached to the reflected mango and for this uh, love in separation the beautiful metaphor that vipralamba and sambhoga like the two banks of and within the two banks the river keeps moving forward they are also like the snake it may move left right but it's moving forward like a axe it moves back and forward but it's cutting the tree it's like a wind and separation a wind and fire so then we discussed that beautiful verse from which krishna is speaking and he is speaking that <laughs> one way it means to he's selling the gopis from the parapaksha par is it parapaksha the opposite paksha Vip- vipaksha vipaksha viprapaksha to go away and he's telling the radharani and the gopi radharani to specifically stay so the poetry of the gopi geet exquisite poetry of the gopi geet is in one sense prefaced or presaged in that poetry of krishna also and then 
uh, you may mother manpuri especially mentioned about how the as you said the vraja the vraja jagannathpur university of vraja prem so chaitanya mahaprabhu's essential mood is love for krishna and there is the he, he accepted the institutionalized form of jagannathpur temple but at the same time he had his private space 